Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. It's a Canadian game. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. It's January 16, 1982, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are at home to host Wayne Gretzky and the Edmonton Oilers. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. The high-scoring Oilers are led by the great one himself and a cast of characters like Paul Coffey and Mark Messier. The Leafs have veteran Dan Maloney and youngster John Anderson and Bill Derlego. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Sunday Night Classics here on Leafs TV. Tonight, the Edmonton Oilers and the Toronto Maple Leafs. And at this time, in 1982, early January, the Leafs youth movement is in full bloom. In fact, on defense, the Leafs have three rookies. Jim Benning, Fred Boymastruck, and Bob McGill are all in their first years of performance. Daryl Sittler is still in the Leaf lineup, but he is only four days removed from being traded to the Philadelphia Flyers. Meanwhile, Wayne Gretzky arrives having scored 56 goals in his first 46 Oiler games this season. As a team, they've already scored 254 times compared to the Maple Leafs who have scored 181. The supervisors of the String Shacks tonight are Grant Fuhrer for the Edmonton Honors and Michelle Bunny LaRock for the Maple Leafs. Because it's January the 16th, 1982, the Oilers have come calling at Maple Leaf Gardens. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. This portion of Leafs TV is brought to you by Meredith University. Education for life. pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. Gretzky would finish the 1981-82 season with a league record 92 goals and 212 points, capturing the Hart Trophy along the way. Mark Messier would hit the 50-goal plateau, and Glenn Anderson would score 38. Daryl Sittler had 38 points in 38 Leaf games to this point in the season, just days before he was being traded. John Anderson would score 31. Terry Martin would add 25 for the Leafs. Born in Ottawa, raised on PEI, Rick Vibe was a member of the Baby Bulls of the WHA before starting his NHL career with the Vancouver Canucks as their first pick, fifth overall in 1979. Dealt along with Bill Lego to the Leafs for Tagger Williams and Jerry Butler in a controversial trade, Vibe would become the first Leaf to score 50 goals in a season in 1981-82 and hit that plateau for three straight seasons. Squid would later be dealt to Chicago and finish his career with Buffalo Sabres. He is currently working as an analyst with Leafs TV and he joins us here tonight to go back to January 16, 1982. The Oilers. I know what. I, you oh. sat as a fan and you went, oh my God, do the Leafs have any kind of a chance at this at all? But ironically enough, this Leaf team and in the, uh, the following years played the Oilers very tough every night. Well, we always get up for them. I mean, as as everybody did, because they were the Oilers and they had Wayne Gretzky and uh, and and I think, in a way, Glenn Sather kind of fueled some of that too, because he had that air to him. Uh, I think the arrogance bench. is the word you're looking for. Well, no, I, no I, well, <laughs> it was. Yeah, you know it what? It was between an air and arrogance. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> if, there, it, if there is it somewhere, was closing. <laughs> it, that gap was closing. <laughs> well, it kind of was, and so <laughs> so he uh, he kind of added to that. I think when he came to town and brought in Gretzky and Messi and all that, he usually had some 
some things to say that would usually add a little fuel to the fire, and, uh, and you wanted to beat the Oilers badly. This team uh, in 1981-82 uh, is, is really going through some turmoil, uh, Ricky. The, the trade that's brought you and uh, Bill Derlego here uh, is a very controversial one. A very popular player in Tiger Williams has left. Lanny McDonald preceded him. Daryl is in uh, a complete state because uh, uh, the rumors are flying around and his, uh, he's taken the C off his chest and everything else has gone on. It, it was, and it was very difficult for all of us to uh, comprehend exactly what was going on. It, for, uh, we were all young. That, that was, a, that was a, the hard part about it. We were all young hockey players uh, early in our NHL careers for the most part, uh, 20, 21 years old, 22 years old, and, and had not ever gone through anything like this. It was very difficult for us to understand what the heck was going on. and. Uh, uh, you know, to see your captain go through what he was going through, uh, it, it was very difficult for us. But uh, uh, as we as we did in those days, uh, we were professionals. We 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 dealt with it, and and we concentrated on what we were supposed to do, and that that was play hockey. And and I think uh, that was the trademark of of the hockey players back in the in those days was that even though there were tough times, they they were able to put that aside and they were able to go on and play. Um, playing in Toronto obviously added another magnifying glass to it. If it was in Minnesota, it probably would have been a lot less of a distraction than it would be in Toronto where the media was all over it. Well, and no Harold was adding fuel to the fire too. Every day, every day. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, another that, Lord of Cordwood will just well, fire it on. He had the tie cats then too, so he had the, <laughs> the jacket with uh, half tie cats, half leafs and wore it all the time. And uh, You know, Harold, if he... he he tried to get on the front page of the sports every single day, and he usually accomplished that. And uh, uh, but Toronto, that's what it was, as it, as it is uh, to this day. It's uh, uh, there's not a bigger media center when it comes to hockey than there is in Toronto and the Toronto Maple Leafs, and and that's the way it, it, it always has been. That and the Montreal Canadiens. So uh, if it was in, uh, as you say, Florida or Tampa Bay or somewhere. Uh, there would have been not, nothing would have happened. There wouldn't have been any coverage of, of what was happening, and uh, uh, that made it a little bit tougher because everything was in the papers every single day. Everything was over on, on the television. Everything was uh, f front and center from from uh, the time you woke up in the morning until the time you went to bed at night. Well, the Leafs uh, see the Edmonton Oilers arrive. They're in first place in their division with 27 wins, 62 points. 254 goals scored. The Maple Leafs have 37 points, 181 goals scored at this particular point. So the Oilers are a high-flying group, and they arrive at Maple Leaf Gardens to tangle with Rick Vive and his Maple Leafs on January the 16th, 1982. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. We're here inviting everyone to take the home phone challenge. Thank wow, you. twins? Yep. Who are you calling? Calling Grandma. Hi, Craig. Hey, sis. How you doing? How's she sound? Sounds good. It sounds great. Try this one. We're gonna call again. Hi, Hey, what's in there? A baby. How does he sound now? It sounds great. Good. Great. The only difference you'll notice is the 25 bucks you'll save every month with Rogers Classic Value Plan. Thank you. He loves it. Why pay more? Hey, buddy. Switch to Rogers Home Phone. More than fresh breath. Icebreaker's Cool Mint. A state of mouth. From coastal Halifax to the Victoria shores, from downtown Toronto and beyond, there are great Canadians. You know, the Arby's Great Canadian, Delicious, slow-roasted seasoned beef piled on a toasted bun with lettuce, tomato, pickles, and onions? Yeah, that great Canadian. And when you get one for the limited time offer of $2.99, that makes you a great Canadian, too. It's a proud day to be thinking Arby's. Come in and snap your picture today for your chance to win a new Suzuki SX4. One of the great things about doing these classic games is watching not only how the game evolves in players, but how coverage of the game evolves, as well as personalities behind the mic. Bobby Hull tonight will make his first efforts as a color analyst working with Bob Cole and Gary Darnhofer 
three in the booth at Maple Leaf Gardens, the Leafs and Oilers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I guess we should say welcome to Gretzky Night in Canada. It's just astounding the way reporters have flocked into this building, let alone the crowd that has come from all over the place to see the Edmonton Oilers led by Gretzky against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mickey, Bobby, this should be quite a spectacle. Well, you have got a spectacle when you get Gretzky in town, Bob. Uh, they're a tremendous hockey team all around. There's a lot of guys out there other than number 99, but Glenn Say there really has this hockey club playing pretty well in the first half of this season. Wally Harris, the referee, has just dropped it in. And Weir for Edmonton shoots it in over the line and behind the net it goes. Back there is Bob Mano. He's out there with Boyne struck for the Maple Leafs. Coming out to center on the wing is Martin. Took the shot. Fjord had to watch it carefully and he hangs on. A 19 year old Bobby Hall, he was coached in his Pee Wee years by Glenn Hall. Now that should tell you something. <laughs> Glenn Hall was one of the most fantastic goaltenders that has ever played this game. He was he was just a fantastic guy and a great, great goaltender. Have a look at Glenn Sather, Bob, <coughs> behind that bench, and what a job he's done with that hockey club. Mano with a screenshot. The first save by Fuhrer. Kept in by Paymont. Stars! The Toronto Maple Leafs take a 1-0 lead on young Mr. Fuhrer. What a beautiful play from the corner for Oban. Well, something unusual the Leafs haven't been doing here in Toronto, getting off to the quick start, but some good heavy work by Paymont. And look at Oban go for the front of that net. Bobby Fury didn't have much of a chance on that one. No, he didn't. You can give the credit, a lot of that credit to Paymont. He did the muscle on it. That kid played with Bobby, uh, against Bobby in the Quebec League, and he could score goals. I think he scored over 90 uh -oh. goals. There's Oban again, tearing it into Paymont. Martin gets set. And Fury. Held on to it. 26 seconds into the game. Oban giving the Leafs a 1-0 lead. Here's how it happened. Well, there's that good work by Paymont in there with that good hard slapping action, almost a slash. And he makes up, comes up with that puck and gets it out in front. Kevin Lowe really giving it up to Paymont, but Paymont some good work in that corner over there. And Oban, Johnny on the spot to knock it in. He's quite a goal scorer. Mano also got an assist on that goal. One to nothing. Toronto leading. They're in again. Maloney went after it. Chasing him is the Riviere in the corner. They bump for it. It goes back to the net and Paul Coffey. 57 points on the season. Top defenseman in the league. Shooting it right down the ice. Trying to lead the pass for Gretzky. He just missed it. Don't have to tell you the number of Gretzky, now do I? He's out there at center ice for Edmonton. Here come the Oilers. And this is the smooth Paul Coffey. Put the shot on the rock and he makes his first save. I'll tell you, the first minute and a half of this hockey game, the Gardens is alive. Maloney couldn't stop it. There's Gretzky. Beautiful pass. Pass now. Rebound. Lovely can't find it. Curry was put in the clear by Gretzky. It comes back, Edmonton with pressure on the Riviere. That hit a skate in front, and the Leafs trying to clear it now. Maloney coming to center. He played it in over the line, and Fjord covering up for Coffey. Here he comes again, Paul Coffey up to center. Shoots it in, the Oilers change as the play comes in back to the net. Scramble in front of the rock, and he has to be careful. He's down to hang on. Now they're ready. One to nothing Toronto to the right of Bonnie LaRock. They get set to drop it in. Gretzky got it back to the line. A quick shot by Hicks is grabbed by LaRock. The second face off in a row. Now Toronto was lost in their own zone. Silton in a few moments ago. And there Hicks was a couple of good shots from the blue line. Bunny LaRock looks very sharp again in the Toronto goal. Gretzky at center for Edmonton. Got the draw up over the net. It goes. It's cleared on the boards by Maloney and out to center. Silkenen turns with it. The Oilers backhanded in. LaRock has to cover up and Salme laid it into the corner for Robert. He was stopped. Hicks took his shot. Maloney trying to clear. Couldn't get it out. Kept in by Anderson in the corner. Back to the net. Went by Gretzky to the other side. Oilers from the blue line. Silkenen. Great save by LaRock. Gretzky was right on top of him. 
You noticed, Bobby, just a moment ago, Messier dumped that puck blindly behind the net. It's incredible. The Oilers are doing this not only with Gretzky, with all their sentiment, blindly throwing it back behind the opposition net. Well, of course, Gretzky has had such a great lot of success coming from behind the net. Uh, I guess the rest of the team figures if he can do it, they better get doing it. Why not? It. Eh? You, you'll see him likely go from behind the net and over into the corners, too, with the puck. Messier is number 11 on the draw. Mano takes it back to the net for Toronto to Robert. He can't clear it out. That's Gretzky back of the goal. Into the corner. Anderson got it back up front. It's deflected right out the rock by Anderson. And LaRock is sharp again in the early going of this game. Toronto leading one to nothing on Oban's goal. So look at young Silton and boy and boy can he fire that puck from that blue line. He had a shot as I mentioned a few moments ago. The Oilers like to use their defensemen quite a bit. Uh, I think we figured out the other night in Edmonton that Edmonton defensemen figure in roughly 30 percent of their scoring which is rather a high average. Uh, uh, you really can tell they like to use those points quite a bit in the offensive zone. The Maple Leafs led by Salming starting out hitting the line up to center Salming shoots it in comes to Robert he slapped it through the crease Maloney trapped it along the boards fed it back of the goal now covering up Doug Hicks played it ahead knocked to center ice Curry didn't see the initial pass Oilers have to come back to regroup this is Silton and hitting center Silton and coming in he looks dangerous on Mano trying to drop it back and Mano stopped him. Oilers have it though. That's lovely getting it in front. Curry is covered. Three leads break out of the zone. Mano, good play to Boschman. Boschman up the line, trying to set it up, and here comes Gretzky. Stop. Just inside the line, he goes back for it. Robert had stopped him. Hearing the four minute mark of the opening period. Long pass to Lovely. Here's Lovely going right in. Can't get a shot. Maloney got back and made a great defensive play to tie up the Edmonton Oilers. And he was in all alone, icing called against Toronto. Tonight's game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Before Noel Coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. This is a big game. The Leafs lead at one to nothing. 4:05 gone in the first period. Another big one in Montreal tonight. Philadelphia is there, and we'll be showing you the goals from that game. Now we're set. Edmonton at this point out shooting Toronto eight to three. But the Leafs have the only goal of the game. Oban scored from Paymon and Mano. Anderson to center, stopped at the Edmonton blue line. Kevin Lowe played a pass on an open wing. It goes down the ice. This will be icing as Bob McGill is back to touch it, and icing is called against Edmonton. That first pass coming out of your own end is so very very important. We always figured if we could get that first pass from the defenseman on the stick on to the guy that's in the move, we're breaking out and away we can go. Bobby, so much has happened to this man Gretzky over the last, well, this season, but over the last day or so. 200 people at a press conference yesterday when they arrived from Philadelphia. And he has been hounded all day today by photographers and uh, various meetings. I don't know if that helps. I somehow doubt it. 
Well, I had a little meeting with him and, and suggested don't get involved in everything. Everyone want a piece of them. They only want five minutes, but they're 500 five minutes. That's Hughes trying to set it through to Gretzky. Missed him. Salming holds it with a skate. He went off balance. Coming back is Derlego to help. Derlego hooked a high one. Down the ice it goes. Coming back, Kevin Lowe. Takes it in the corner, back to the zone net. Tries to move over after it. Anderson for checking for Toronto. Anderson trying to knock it loose with five. And Weir takes it. Where's pass stopped by Salming, but that's low covering up for Edmonton to Fogelin to center ice with Weir. This is Hughes on the right wing. Hughes was bumped by McGill trying to go in. Hunter looked for the loose puck, but LaRock decides to smother it. Well, so far, it seems that the Leafs are doing a darn good job of getting on the Oilers in their own zone. They're not letting them get started, get those big rushes up the ice, although Edmonton did have a rally of a couple of minutes where they didn't get the Leafs out of their own zone, but they're forechecking right now very effective, Bobby. I think they're pinching with that defenseman where the play is coming out on that side. That defenseman is staying in and pinching in there, and they'll have some success with that. Matty Hagman has 19 goals for Edmonton. He's at center ice wearing number 10. The draw is there at escapes. He can't play it though. He was tied up perfectly by Oban. And the Leafs shoot it high over the glass at the far side, and it's into the crowd. There is Hagman. Not a great skater, but very methodical. Um, the basics of his game, very, very good. He passes well. He makes great plays. He's a very heady hockey player. One of the three Finnish players on the team, the others, Curry and Siltonen. Comes right back to the blue line. There's the shot. That's knocked off by LaRock off to the corner as La Riviere let it go. And the Leafs shoot it down the ice again. That's coffee, and icing is called against Toronto. Boy, the Leafs came out, and I suppose, Mickey, with all the attention centered around Edmonton and this particular game tonight, it has to do something for the Maple Leaf players, and they showed it when the puck was dropped in at center ice. There's no question about it. We've noticed before that the Leafs usually do not come out that strongly in the first period, although Nick Luck would certainly wish as they would, but uh, they seem to get stronger in the second period. But here they've come out very quickly. Here's Edmonton with some pressure on again. The lock down, but the shot was deflected. Zanderson trying to pick the far corner. Amon lost to near the Edmonton blue line. That's Anderson knocking it back in his own zone as they try to wind up a free skating team, this Edmonton Oilers machine. Out to center, the pass skipped away from Martin. Now he gets a break and goes in with it. Martin tried to get in position, did. Pass to Boynstruck. A weak shot was off the net. Oban from the corner takes a look. Back to Boynstruck, took a shot. Deflected just wide by Martin. Kept in by Oban. Boynstruck will get it again. Up the blue line, he cleared it back in the net. Obaz in hustling all over the place inside the line for the Maple Leafs. Gets in front now. Obaz scores! That's two for the young man, and he's full value for that one. He did not stop working. Two up in Toronto. Now some good speed work in the corner there by Oban and Terry Martin. There's Oban, you see, all alone in front of the net. And he just drilled that thing right off that far goal post. Again, Fuhrer with no chance on a play, but uh, the Leafs on top of Edmonton again, causing them to make some mistakes. See where the play came out of the corner, came out of the corner behind the net. Oban didn't lose any time getting it away either. He got it away quick. And you notice he moved back in front when he did his forechecking job and got a position. The puck came to him, and it's 2-0 Toronto. We'll give you that scoring play in a moment. We get a chance, but right now, Edmonton is on the move. Silton and shoots it in. Curry on the other side was stopped. Long shot for the blue line. LaRock saw it deflect, and then he cleared it over the glass. Two goals by Obab, Toronto, 2-0 the Leafs. That second one at 6.33 from Martin and Boimstruck. The first one at 26 seconds. Toronto two, Edmonton no score. From the draw, Mano kicked it to one side. Solving up Toronto, puts it out to center ice and Siltonen has it. Got it back in over the line, Gretzky falls. Mano gets it up on the left wing. 
Maloney is coming in after it, but Silkelman is back there. Silkelman starting out. Long lead pass to center. Coming in is Curry with Gretzky going in front of the net. Curry in the corner, back to Lumley. In the corner is Lumley with Curry. Curry tried to get away from solving. Robert picked the opening to get it up to center ice. Nearing the eight-minute mark of the opening period, 2-0 Toronto. That's Hicks clearing it up, but Salming brings it back, and then he was belted by Hicks and fell. Gretzky appears to want to do something now. Here he is to center. Gretzky leading this attack. Wants to go all the way. Now waits for help. He's bodied by Salming. And the Leafs clear it out over the line. Oilers bring it back in, ball. That's lovely centering the curve right in. And a beautiful save by Bunny LaRock. But great pressure exerted by Gretzky and the Oilers. Here we go. This all started, Bob, when Gloria Salming took a run at Gretzky over by the Leaf bench. And you can see the dander was up. Some of the Edmonton players coming in to get into this thing. The Yeri Curry, it's his second excellent chance all alone with the Rock. It's the second time he hasn't been able to handle a yeah, puck body. The puck was bouncing when he got it on his backhand. I don't think he wanted, really wanted to go that way, but the puck went to his to his backhand and put him on his backhand. A good play by Lumley to send Curry in all alone again. And look at this. Just happens to lose the handle. He can't quite, as you see, he doesn't get much wood on it. But again, Bunny LaRock holding his ground out there. Looked like me when I had a penalty shot once. I went in on my back, had one of those hook sticks. Well, and that was the days of the hooks, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> you never, you're lucky to hit the end of the rink with those oh. hook sticks some of those days. <laughs> Gretzky back to the net, centered it. Gretzky again gets it back to the line. The Riviere closing in. Takes a shot, it's deflected, a scramble. Gretzky is after it. The backhander in LaRock is unbeatable so far. Pretty good action around the uh, the Toronto Maple Leaf net and Bunny LaRock. Gretzky with a couple of opportunities. And again, LaRock hanging in there. Right now, Toronto leading two to nothing and Edmonton out shooting them 12 to three at this point. Notice how Wayne got that puck away. He was falling forward. It came on his backhand and uh, he still got it up in the air and, and made the goaltender make a save on it. Reminds me of a lot of a guy by the name of Cornway. The puck used to follow him away around a lot in the hockey game. Gretzky, Brackenbury on the right wing going back to the net after Salming. Brackenbury got a stick on it. And I think we have the first penalty of the hockey game. Wally Harris calling it as, well, they were starting to rough it up over the last 40 seconds or so. And as you pointed out, Mickey, it came after the check thrown by Salming on Gretzky. With a score, Toronto 2, Edmonton nothing. This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. From coastal Halifax to the Victoria Shores, from downtown Toronto and beyond, there are great Canadians. You know, the Arby's Great Canadian. Delicious, slow-roasted seasoned beef piled on a toasted bun with lettuce, tomato, pickles, and onions. Yeah, that great Canadian. And when you get one for the limited time offer of $2.99, that makes you a great Canadian, too. It's a proud day to be thinking Arby's. Come in and snap your picture today for your chance to win a new Suzuki SX4. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. More than fresh breath. Icebreaker's Cool Mint. A state of mouth. Salming gets the call for roughing. Well, there's a look at how it happened. Boy, he gave Brackenberry a couple of pretty good shots in the back of the head there. Well, Brackenberry, he's going to start things moving when he gets out there. So Edmonton with a man advantage now, and now the play is called. We're getting uh -oh. another penalty. It's right in front of the net. Looks like it's going to be Messier for Edmonton, Bob. 
very, very unnecessary penalty when you've got a man advantage and Messier in front of the net. If it's him alone, we'll have to wait and see. He's questioning Wally Harris there now, but it looks like Messier alone, and that'll even up the sides. Slashing call against Messier. He's off. Bad penalty to take when you've already got a man advantage in a power play, Bobby. You've got to take a little bit of the action for that. Oh, especially when you're down two to nothing. Uh, you should never, ever get involved to get a penalty unless you want to take the other man with you. Then that's a good penalty. So they're five aside. And Boyne struck and Mano are on for Toronto. Five and Derlego. Two nothing Toronto. Coming up to the nine minute mark of the first period, this is Bill Derlego. A high bullet shot went by everybody and over the glass. Philadelphia is in the Montreal Forum tonight. We have a goal there. Philadelphia out shooting Montreal 6 to 5. 12 minutes and 13 seconds left in the opening period. There is Ganey. Ganey working in on that left side takes the shot. Bouncing to the far corner and picking it up is Adam. We didn't quite get the goal for you, but it's 1-0 Canadians. Here's Gretzky for Edmonton. Gretzky dropped it beautifully, but the Leafs got back to break it up as Coffey missed the drop pass. Gerlego comes in with five, and he was hit hard. Said, and man. he seems to be injured. Hughes checked him. A heavy shoulder check, and Vibe went sprawling. It looked like Vibe may have tried to jump up over top of the Edmonton player. It didn't look like a dirty check or anything at all. You'll have a look at it here. Vibe busting into the middle of the ice to take the pass right there. He sort of jumped on his own, Bobby. He did. Uh, defenseman, uh, Euler defenseman coming across, and he tried to jump over top of him. His momentum carried him into the, the Euler player. That goal of Montreal, Bob, by the way, scored by Pierre Mondou. That's a big game down there, Philadelphia at Montreal. The Canadians really have not been playing very well lately, having their problems. Incidentally, Vive, as you can see, has been awarded the captaincy of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Sittler officially is still with the team, but is not playing. And here's Rick Five. I think the captain. I think a good choice. Uh, Rick, uh, he comes to play every game. He's uh, he's a kid that um, you want to lead the club, and I think it was a very good choice. Although I'm sure we all miss Daryl very much. Toronto two, Edmonton no score. Nearing the halfway mark of the opening period, there's five, freewheeling it up over the line, score! He got it over the line. Three, nothing, Toronto. Well, we'll have to wait and see if Fuhrer was screened on this play. There's no way you should really score a goal from out that far. He beat uh, Fuhrer completely cleanly on that play. And it really doesn't look on the replay like he was screened, Bobby. Did it hit his defenseman stick a little bit, maybe? It, it may have. It could it have. have. He may have just been, uh, I might have been just a little bit angry at that last check. He looked at Harris uh, <laughs> as though maybe he thought there should have been a penalty call. He certainly a little more one. adrenaline flowing there and that's it. Ricky Vibes, 28th goal of the year. Unassisted at 9-12. And the Leafs. Martin coming in now. Rolling in front. And Paymon is covered up. Buehr scoops it up. Throws it behind the net. The Oilers down by three. Desperately trying to get something going. And they still have not reached the halfway mark of the first period. Here's Weir keeping it in. Slides a pass over here. Hunter got it back to the line. It comes back to him. Weir goes back to the net. Mano all over him. Weir gets a stick on it. Now he's forced to hold it with a skate. It comes loose. They get it back again. And finally, they decide to call it with four players in on the boards. Danny Gallivan tells us about the first goal in Montreal. Well, here's a look at how it all happened. Mondu starting the play out, back to the point to Langway. You see Mondu when he dumps that puck off, goes to the front of the net on the deflection by Lachlan, and bingo. 
Pierre Mondou ever Johnny on the spot and the Canadians lead it one to nothing. I'm sure before the night is over we'll get Danny on describing some more because with those two teams there in the forum there will be plenty of scoring here we've got three and they all belong to the Leafs very unusual situation for the Toronto Maple Leafs one as I mentioned Nick Luck would like to see more of but they've come out of the gate just flying here there's Hicks taking a shot a rock cutting the angle stopped it with a stick Oban bumped on the boards he has two goals for Toronto tonight there's Oban to Martin one man is back for Edmonton it's Stilton and Martin is in to test him now Martin a great move and Stilton got a stick down and deflected it high into the crowd five seconds left in solving's penalty ten seconds in the penalty to Messier it's not funny the way it's all happened here all this hype today about Edmonton and Gretzky and look at this three nothing Toronto I was just going to say I'll sometimes uh, that uh, goes against a team uh, if Toronto wasn't up for tonight's game they never would be up and if they were they came out right from the opening gong and uh, had the puck in the net before the first minute was up and they haven't stopped there's Benning trying his shot that did not miss by much. Amon stopped back of the net and Weir lost it in front of the goal but covering up was Kevin Lowe and he gets a long pass away down the ice. LaRock stops it back there. Melrose coming out played it to the line. This is Benning through the middle to all back. Stop two remember. Back into the Piedmont. The rebound. And Fjord stopped two in a row. Up the line, Melrose stops it, lets it go. Oban went after it. Rebound again. Here's Oban looking for it with Paymont shooting. That's stopped by Fjord. Terrific action inside the Edmonton line, and the Leafs stay with it. Martin is belted hard and not flying. Puck comes to center. D'Amico, the linesman, went for a fall. They've got everything so far in this game. Fjord stopped one with a stick. Leaves changing as the play goes on. Here come the Edmonton Oilers. That's Messier. He took a shot, got it back as it hit a leg. Mano blocking it. Robert for Toronto. Comes to center. Scooped it from there, and it's stopped by La Riviere. La Riviere gets it again. Coming out. Long pass on an open wing. It slides into the Toronto zone, and Salming has it. Salming over here. This is Maloney. Coming out for Toronto. The long pass on the right wing was a good one for Robert, but he was checked right away and couldn't make a play. And now it's called on the offside. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. We're here inviting everybody to take the home phone challenge. Who are you calling? My sister. Hi. How are you? How's she sound? Great. Cool. All right, shift on over and try this one. Do you even have any clue what's going on? Yeah. No. <laughs> Hi there, how are you? How's she sound now? The same. The only difference you'll notice is the 25 bucks you'll save every month with Rogers Classic Value Plan. Why pay more? Switch to Rogers Home Phone. Before, no coward. After, no coward. <laughs> no coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30, No Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. Well, we've seen some high-powered offense, but it's not from the Edmonton Oilers. The Toronto Maple Leafs have burst out of the gate with three in the first half of the first period. Normie Oba has scored twice as uh, that line of Will Paymon, Terry Martin working well. And RV, you have your 28th of the year, a lovely unassisted effort that uh, has the Leafs out in front three to nothing. Mike Nicklock is behind the bench, and uh, uh, it's like a revolving door back there for the last three or four years. Uh, Joe Crozier, Mike Nicklock, Punch Imlach, uh, Dickie Duff worked a couple of games. Um, what Floyd was Smith before Floyd him Smith? And, uh, exactly. What was what was Mike Nicklock like? 
Mike was uh, very, very quiet, very easygoing. Uh, he wasn't a guy that yelled or screamed and uh, did things that way. He, he was very, very quiet. He would call you into his office. He would just have a conversation with you. He was like a father, and, and he would sit you down like you, you were his child and just speak with you uh, very unassuming and very quietly and just and, and kind of... Uh, I, I like Mike's style because... Uh, it, it was good for me because uh, he, he all he did was talk to me, wanted to know, make sure everything was okay, is everything fine, is there anything I can do to help? Uh, you know, uh, you're playing well, or maybe you're not playing as well as you could. Maybe you could be a little bit better. And and I think that was the approach that uh, probably was best suited for me. Now he gets his reputation uh, to gain this job from years in the American Hockey League, a mainstay in Hershey and the assistant coach to Fred Shiro during those great Philadelphia Flyer teams. Was Mike Nickluck an X and O's guy? Uh, no, he wasn't an X and O's guy, uh, and uh, I think Freddie was at that, in those days. And uh, Well, actually, I, I, I'm not sure whether that was the case or he had to decipher everything that Freddie said to his players. because <laughs> The fog. I, the fog, because was, I know he said a lot of things that his players would sit there and go, what did he what mean did by he that? Say? <laughs> so Mike probably had to decipher everything for the players, and and uh, but he wasn't much of an X and O's guy. He was just uh, again uh, wasn't a big motivator, or a loud guy, or anything to get you going or kick you in the butt. He he really was a communicator and, and liked to talk to the guys. Now by this time, uh, the boss uh, HB has uh, decided that a very young uh, player from Vancouver. Acquired uh, in the trade should wear the the captain C. Oh, that was me, right? Yeah, that's yeah, you. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, you. That's right. Yeah. I, uh, Try I to follow along the plot line I here. I forgot you about that. that for a second. Yeah. You know, I, I do remember that now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was kind of, uh, you know, I mean, it's the way it was. Harold came down one day and he says, "You're going to be the captain." Oh, really? Uh, yeah, you are. Well, okay. <laughs> so like, there was no discussion. Well, no, no would you didn't like argue, to have the argue. job? You, you didn't argue with Harold. I mean, he was, he was the boss. It's uh, like Steinbrenner is today with the Yankees. And, and usually when they speak, you listen and you just do what they say. And uh, uh, especially when you're that young. I mean, you, you've got this guy that's uh, bigger than life and a and, uh, uh, colorful guy that's been uh, in the news every single day. And he tells you you're going to be captain. You go, okay, uh, that's fine. And... Uh, okay, you, so now 10 minutes later, after you've sat down and maybe told some of your teammates, did it kind of sink in and go, oh my God, what am I in for here? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it really, it sank in a little bit later, uh, probably maybe a year or so later, and uh, uh, when all of a sudden, you know, there was a lot of, the team wasn't very good, and, and we were going through some troubled times on the ice, and, and uh Coaches were going left and right, and uh, I guess it sunk in then. And then you look around the room, and, and, and unfortunately, you look for some of the older guys, which we didn't have that many, but there were a few to kind of jump in and like, okay, guys, you can help me out any time here. And, and guys really didn't want to get involved and, and speak up because of Harold Ballard, because they didn't want to get on the bad side of Harold. And, uh, and that's exactly what happened. And at that point in time, I was like, oh, here we are. I mean, uh, what the heck's going to happen here? And, uh, but you plug along, you do the best uh, job you can, and uh, you try to be the best captain you possibly can. You try to uh, help your teammates along. You, you do whatever you can on the ice. And, and realize that you are now immediately one of the most popular Canadians in, uh, in the nation, most visible anyway. Well, and that comes along with the territory, mm -hmm. too. And... Uh, you know, then there's that, that's not a bad thing. I mean, no, it's, it's kind of nice yeah. in, in a way. And uh, but with it comes a pretty heavy burden, and uh, and it's something that you have to uh, be pretty strong to to carry. And uh, but it was uh, it was fun. All right. Well, Rick Vive has scored goal number 28, unassisted. Leafs leading three to nothing over the vaunted Edmonton Oilers. Let's go back upstairs to Bob Cole. Bob Cole with Mickey Redmond and Bobby Hull in the gondola at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. The Leafs have stormed out in this first period to take a 3-0 lead over the Edmonton Oilers. Lumley from center, up over the line. Lumley trying to get through, and Mano took it away as Salming had covered Lumley. And the Leafs come out again. Robert to center, spun around and falls. Maloney waits, didn't wait long enough. He brought it in, and Boschman was offside. 
Well, the last time we looked, it was about, I think, 12 3 in shots in favor of Edmonton. And right now, although the Leafs are playing very well offensively, Bunny Larac has taken it away from Edmonton. He's standing up, he's uh, playing the angles, he's moving out, moving in, staying on his feet. I think that's the most important thing for a young goaltender. Make sure you stay on your feet because once you get flopping, you can stop that first one, but the second and third one, you better be in position to do it. The Leafs and Bunny Larac last night were stormed by Buffalo. Eight to two. But they're alive tonight. This is Lumley again, jamming the brakes on, gets it up the coffee. He walked right into it. And I'll tell you, LaRock has his eye on that thing tonight. He's very alert. We'll talk about a hot potato. This thing come off the backboard like a pool cue. I think it hit the glass just above the um, dasher. Look at that, right back on the top right of back, the net. Hit the crossbar on the way back out. Against the Soviets one, one game, they fired the puck up, puck up against that uh, in Moscow, up against that uh, mesh they have, and it catapulted right back out to uh, uh, Petrov or Mihailov and Bangal. It was in our net before the goaltender turned around. I remember in 72, the first goal they scored on driving happened that very same way, Bobby. A big net affair. And it appeared as if they knew exactly what they were doing. <laughs> Salming the center. High shot in wide. Lumley has it back there, just left it. The Riviere's pass to Curry coming in. Curry has Gretzky on the right wing with him, dropped it back. But well, that's a different 99. That's Paymont, and he played it to center ice. The Riviere again takes his time. Edmonton Oilers just lining up, and now they throw it in as Coffey slapped it behind. The Maple Leaf goal. Loose is on for Toronto. Gretzky stopped him, then it's cleared by Boschman. Silton in. Played it off to one side. Coffey knocked it in. Gretzky went in for checking, but the Leafs are all back covering up, and Loose just put it up to center. Gretzky again was covered as he tried to go in. This time, Mano was in front of him. 6.30 left in the period. 3-0 Toronto. Now it's Hughes coming in for a shot. Didn't get good wood on it, and it was just wide. Five clears it all the way down the ice. That's Sultanet winding up. A good skater. can carry the puck. There he is throwing it in. Boimstruck is coming back to cover, but Hughes is there first. Tried to center it, and LaRock, watching it again, just fell on it. 6.07 remaining in the first period. I'm Bob Cole, and with me tonight in the gondola is Mickey Redmond and Bobby Hall. And the Toronto Maple Leafs have surprised the Edmonton Oilers by three goals here so far. That's Hicks shooting it back in the net to Weir. He centered it. Weir again takes a look. Throw it in front. They can't find it. Two Leafs break out. This is Anderson carrying. Coming in with five. Anderson's weak shot is deflected by Fuhr into the crowd. Oban has two goals for Toronto. And Rick Five, the other. Look at Billy DeLego off to a good start this year with 18 goals already. And this line of DeLego, Vive, and Anderson really the least top line so far this season. Nikolak was going to use them tonight against the Gretzky line, but he decided against it. And he figured possibly if they were all worried about checking Gretzky, they wouldn't be doing their scoring production. And uh, so far, it looks like a pretty good move. Looks like he's found a home here. Billy uh, had a little attitude problem earlier, but he's found a home here in Toronto, and I think he's enjoying playing. Playing very well. Siltonen coming out to Hughes. Hughes up over the line. He threw it back to the net. McGill went back to cover on him. It comes loose for five. Five can't move it out. It's kept in by Edmonton. They send two in deep. Hughes is the lead man. Can't find it, though. And Toronto will clear it up to center. That's Doug Hicks coming back. Siltonen lines up with him. Gerlego went back to forecheck. And it's Siltonen up to Hughes. Hitting the line to center ice. Messier coming in for Edmonton. Messier driving for the net. Stopped back of the goal as he fell. It's at the line where Anderson chopped at it. The Leafs get a break. A long lead pass to Vive. Shoots. And Pure out 15 feet. Cut the angle to make the save and Vive. Messier right back for Edmonton. In over the line. Tried his shot. It comes in front of Hackman. He couldn't get a shot away. And finally, it's over the glass and into the crowd. 
tonight so far. The Oilers are they're doing a lot of uh, good skating and playmaking in their own zone and up in center ice area, but they're just not being able to finish around. And when they do, LaRock is there to stop them. Well, you watch what Toronto is doing. They're lining up. They've always got one man coming back with the two defensemen. They're they're lining up across the blue line, and uh, Edmonton isn't able to just carry it through all the time, and they hate to throw it away. That's Benning up to center ice to Paymont. Martin is on the left wing. But he was in a little too quickly and offside. 439 remaining in the period. 3 0 Toronto. There's Terry Martin. Also off to a pretty good start this year. He's got a couple of hat tricks this year. 16 goals and 13 assists as you look at Grant Fuhr. And he's wondering about his streak. And out on the ice comes Mr. Brackenberry for Edmonton, who doesn't get in a lot of games, only playing in his 10th game. As Bobby mentioned, he's always in the middle of the action out there. He's number 15. There he is, against Martin. Now low. Headed over to Fogelin. Fogelin on the boards to Brackenberry, and he was stopped. Hagman flipped it back. Low again. Shoots it on one end. Here comes Brackenberry. Left it there. Martin will clear it. Hit Obama escape, but grabbed then by Paymon. In with Obama. Paymon shot. The rebound comes right back in front. Paymon over along the boards, trying to get it over in front again. Obama went over to help him. Now Ken Berry, number 19 for Edmonton, failed to move it out. Here's Paymon again. Rebound. Martin around the net, centered it. And falling was Lee Fogelin to make a good play. Berry trying to move it. Gets it up. Brackenberry is away to center. But it's stopped by Benning, then he lost it. The Leafs cover up, and Oban from center ice. Brackenberry ran into Melrose, and here's the penalty. Brackenberry goes. Speak of the devil. <laughs> well, he loves to run into people like that. He really had the elbow, elbows up on Melrose, and Wally Harris wasn't too far away from the play. He was the aggressor on that one. Barry, Barry Melrose did retaliate a little bit, but uh, Brackenberry was the aggressor. So look at a couple of gentlemen in the crowd, well known over these days, Walter and Keith Gretzky. I guess Keith uh, second to Wayne, and they're enjoying the hockey game. I guess not so far, they're not, with the Edmonton Oilers trailing three to nothing. You see the concern on their face. A little concern. It's not over with yet. There's a look at the penalty right there. You can see the elbows up. On Brackenberry with 3.37 to go in this first period. The Oilers will be shorthanded. Tough time now for Edmonton to take a penalty with the score Toronto 3 and Edmonton nothing. Only 3.37 left in the period. Looking at uh, Walter and Keith Gretzky, uh, Bob, Dr. David Lloyd uh, graciously donated his tickets to the Gretzky family. He's the head of the Sick Children's Hospital, and so they could sit. There was a tough time even for Wayne Gretzky to get tickets to this hockey game tonight. 13 people of the Booster Club came from Edmonton. No tickets. Watching it on TV. There's Anderson coming in front. Your had to cover up with Gerlego being pushed out of the crease now. Gerlego tried to get the loose puck. And sticks her high again. Linesmen are in rather quickly, though. The referee, Wally Harris, I think they have it settled. So with Brackenberry of Edmonton off, he has 144 left in his penalty. The Leafs enjoy a 3-0 lead here in the opening period. And now with the extra man on for Toronto, the face-off in the Edmonton zone, so the Oilers have to be careful. Gretzky, though, scooped one down the ice and just inside his own line. Solving, being watched by Messier. Five, Gerlego, Mano. And Anderson, the power play for Toronto. Derlego looking good. Derlego dropping it back to Mano. Took a shot. Pure stopped it. He looked shaky. He lost it. Into the corner. It's cleared back in front. Here's a break for Gretzky. Coming down. Gretzky cutting in front. And he was stopped by Salming. Here's Gretzky. He tried to tap another try. And he cannot get that puck by Bunny the Rock. Gretzky just calmly tried to deflect it by the Rock. Took the chance and went down, stopped it, and came back to him. But no, sir, he couldn't do it on a second try. Boy, this building is just a buzz. I don't know the last time I've heard it. Here's a look at how it happened. Gretzky losing it, but Messier picks it up. And look at Gretzky all alone in front. Both Toronto defensemen following him, and LaRock 
like a rock, stood his ground. Look at that. Then it came right back oh, to him boy. after he directed it towards La Rock. It came back to him. He pulled it around him. And when he shot it, it hit the goal post and came back and went under La Rock again. Looked like he had that thing in a lacrosse stick for a moment there, didn't it? One of those nights. La Rock holding the hot hand at this moment for the Toronto Maple Leafs. 3-0 Toronto, 245 left in the period. A minute and five seconds left in the Edmonton penalty to Brackenbury. And Edmonton keep the Leafs inside the line. Now they start out, led by Benning. Martin is trailing Benning. Benning tries the shot in on the boards for Paymont. Didn't come back to him. Oban gets it back near the line. Robert winds up over here to Benning. He takes the shot deflected wide. Oban went after it with Paymon. Ed Martin three leaves behind the net. And Kevin Lowe trying to cover up for Edmonton. Now it comes back to Benning. We're getting another penalty now. This one will be against the Toronto Maple Leafs. 2.06 remaining in the period. Norman Aubin has two goals. The first one at 26 seconds. Then 6.33 and 5. 28 at 9.12. Now the Oilers up to center ice. Flipped in. Came on to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Is off. They're five aside. Aubin in the corner. Trying to tie up his man. Benning takes it behind the net. Seven seconds left in the Edmonton penalty. 140 in the period. Oban is center is stop. This is Gretzky breaking Randy on goal. And he missed the open side. Gets it back in front again. He had the rock beaten, but he couldn't find the handle on it again. There's Hunter trying to set it up. Power play now for Edmonton. There's a drive. And it's knocked away. Anderson was dumped. There's Gretzky around in that center. And it went by two Edmonton Oilers. And Oban. Shoots the puck down the ice. Unbelievable action around the Maple Leaf goal. A minute five left in the period. 3-0 Toronto. Oilers cannot get it in. They can't buy one, as they say. There's Mano. He'll clear it as far as center. 55 seconds left in the period. Gretzky comes in on this attack. Played it in front of Anderson. And it was cleared away, but not out. Oilers with a man advantage. Solving his bump. Anderson went in to help. Zanussi finds the opening and clears it down the ice. Isn't this something? <laughs> Salming just got away with the takeaway. Oh, he sure did. He grabbed that hold of <laughs> Now then, Edmonton with 28 seconds left in the period on the power play. They bring it in. Messier and Anderson has broken up and cleared, and Gretzky will have to do it at center. His pass got in over the line. There's Gretzky with it. Back to the line of coffee. Over here it comes. Anderson waits. Now he throws one in behind the net for Gretzky. He centered it. Leafs covering up. Can't get it out. Sildenen's pass to Coffey, the backhander. Wide. And the bell goes to win. A wild and woolly first period. And all the scoring by the Toronto Maple Leafs. There's Bunny LaRock, the man of the hour. So the score at the end of the first period is Toronto 3, Edmonton nothing. You got a name? John Dillon. I love bangs. I'm not gonna lie to you. On July 1st. So later. We'll get John Dillon. Discover the heart. We're having too good a time today. We ain't thinking about tomorrow. Of a legend. <laughs> he will be armed and extremely dangerous. Where are you going? Anywhere I'm on. Based on the true story. You want to take that ride with me? Yeah, I want to take that ride with you. Public Enemies. In theaters July 1st. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself 
Want someone to work with you or have us do it for you? We can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. Normie Oba has scored twice for the Maple Leafs. Rick Vive has the other goal. The Leafs lead 3-0 at the end of the first period over the Edmonton Oilers. And uh, Normie Oba arrived uh, in the Leaf camp uh, as a highly touted, high-scoring player from the Quebec Junior League with the uh, extra baggage attached that can't skate well enough. Well, he seems to have a little jump to his stride here in the first period anyway with a pair. Working with Terry Martin and Will Paymar, that line's played well. Well, he's playing with two pretty good players, two guys that have been around and, and uh, have the experience. But normally, there's no question about uh, his ability to score goals and, and his ability to handle the puck and see the ice because he, he does all that very well. I guess uh, the knock on him is his skating and... Uh, uh, you know, but it, it's it's unfortunate because that's just the way the way it is. They they knock you. I mean, if you can't skate, they say you can't play. But uh, you know, uh, there's been a lot of players over the years: uh, Dave Anderchuk, uh, Andrew Brunette, and uh, Phil they, Esposito. They, Phil Esposito. They say they can't skate. They can't skate. They can't play this game because they can't skate. Well, uh, Dave Anderchuk is probably going to be in the Hall of Fame. Phil Esposito is in the Hall of Fame. So. Uh, there were a few guys that could get by by not being great skaters. And having the smarts and things of that nature obviously helps a great deal too. Uh, Boria Salming and Bob Mano are, are playing together as a tandem and uh, uh, there's no uh, secret that Mike Nicklack wants Salming for sure out against the Gretzky line and Mano seems to be playing well too. Well, he, he wants one of those guys on the ice at all times and uh, he, he had Laurie Boschman also playing against Gretzky whenever he was on the ice which was very difficult because Gretzky's out there all the time and you can't uh, have one guy. So Don Luce was the other guy who uh, was kind of uh, had that role whenever Laurie couldn't get on the ice against Gretzky. But uh, he always wanted Salming or Mano. And, and uh, in this particular period, they did a great job against Gretzky because he didn't have much. Not much? Anything. Nothing. The Leafs leading 3 nothing over the Edmonton Oilers and you're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. Hi, this is Chuck Storm. I'm live at the scene where last night there was a robbery at about 3.30 in the morning. Now, police have... Oh, oh. From coastal Halifax to the Victoria Shores, from downtown Toronto and beyond, there are great Canadians. You know, the Arby's Great Canadian. Delicious, slow-roasted seasoned beef piled on a toasted bun with lettuce, tomato, pickles, and onions? Yeah, that great Canadian. And when you get one for the limited time offer of $2.99, that makes you a great Canadian, too. It's a proud day to be thinking Arby's. Come in and snap your picture today for your chance to win a new Suzuki SX4. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. In the first period, the Leafs opened the scoring with Oban's fourth of the year, assisted by Will Pema and Bob Mano, and it came early, 26 seconds into the first period. Oban's second goal of the game from Terry Martin and young Fred Boimstruck came at 6.33, and then Rick Vibe with his 28th of the year unassisted at 9.12 of the first period, and the Leafs own a 3-0 lead. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. More than fresh breath. Icebreaker's cool mint. A state of mouth.
Before, no coward. After, no coward. <laughs> no coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. What a first period we've seen. Oh, that's great. My son Blake, who's playing for the Dixie Beehive, and I were talking last night, he said that over. He said, do you remember that over and Dad? And he said he played in that Quebec League, and he said he can score goals, and he sure can. Well, Mickey, I'd say we're not through of goal scoring in this game yet. We could have an 8-6-er. <laughs> High-scoring affairs. If Edmonton can, can open up, the Leafs have sure done it. All back, tried to flip it in front. Now we're getting a penalty called against the Edmonton Oilers. All back went flying. And Edmonton drawing a penalty here at 20 seconds of this second period. Hagman. Here's a look at how this happened. Oban just going for the loose puck and just a very slight hook by Hagman. And Oban did a good job of putting on a show for uh, Harris, Bobby? He, he certainly did. He knew that the referee was looking, and it didn't take much to pull him down. Wayne Forsey and John D'Amico. The linesman, Oban, Haymaw, Martin, Salming, and Benning, the two defensemen. The Oilers shoot it down the ice. Oilers can ill afford to give up a fourth goal here. I think this, if, if there's going to be a critical part of this game, this could be it. Uh, if they happen to go down by four, it could be all over for them. The Toronto Maple Leafs winding up as Salming to Paymon. Paymon shoots it in, and here comes Oban. He lets it slide back to Benning. It's tipped near the net. Oh, and nearly jammed it in on that short side. But the Oilers covered up, and Weir's clearing it for Edmonton. A minute, 24 seconds left in the penalty. To Matty Hagman. Salming starts it again. The lead pass off the skate of Benning. Martin to Paymont coming in. Paymont doesn't shoot it. Cleared it into the corner. And Weir traps it for Edmonton. Cleared it out. Knocked the center ice by Hunter. Weir again trailing the play. Trying to kill off this penalty for the Edmonton Oilers. Oban spun around. Carries on though. Centered it. And it's knocked away by Fjord. And here's Benning. He didn't shoot it. Martin centered it right in front of Paymont. Fjord is down. Slaps at it. But the goaltender, Grant Fuhrer, hangs on. And some more pushing and shoving in behind the Edmonton goal. Pretty, go ahead, Bobby. Pretty tough kid, that Paymon. He's from a family of uh, pretty tough kids, and he uh, he won't back down from anyone. I just met his mom and dad out here tonight. He's, I don't know how old he is, but a big, stout man, and just won the wrist wrestling champion uh, for a man his age against someone 28 years old. See that statistic on Wilf Paymont? He is a big man, his father. I've seen him a few times here. Here's a look at some of the pressure at Paymont again, right in front. Looks like Wally Harris took a little bit of uh, time here blowing this whistle. Uh, Paymont almost got that thing underneath here. The Leafs on a power play. Robert's at the point with Mano. Now Robert gets it. Robert can't shoot it though. Played it over in front five. Took the shot. Fuhrer stopped that. Leafs keep the pressure on. That's Robert to Mano. He's screen shot is knocked down in front of it. Another shot. Another one. Well, Fuhrer couldn't stop them all. And finally, Anderson got the third attempt and a power play goal for Toronto. Four to nothing. Well, you notice on this play that Fuhrer was screened on the play. He didn't see the puck. It hit him. In the trapper, Vive got the rebound. Fuhr made the next save, and Anderson was right there. Of course, Edmonton playing a man short. He banged in the open rebound. And 4-0 for Toronto. Toronto. Here's Johnny Anderson right on the spot. 151, the time of the goal. 25th of the year for Anderson. 4-0 Toronto. Now, Mickey, your prediction earlier was that if the Leafs got the fourth before Edmonton got on the board, it could be it for the Oilers tonight. We'll see. Could be. Remember. Okay. <laughs> Edmonton organizing. Curry's pass didn't get very far. Coffee brings it up over the line, shoots it into the corner, and solving for Toronto. 
to Maloney, and he slapped it out to center ice, having been checked. Coffey shoots it in again. The Rock stops it behind the net, dropped it for solving. Maloney trapped on the boards by La Riviere. Maloney gets it loose, though, up over the line. To center, and Mano shoots it in. Nearing the three-minute mark of the second period, 4-0, Toronto. Gretzky is on. This is Gretzky, stick handling out of the zone. Hitting the line, center, up over the leap line, offside, called against Edmonton. You're looking at Wayne Gretzky, who has been stymied along with all the other Oilers so far tonight by the Leafs and Bunny LaRock. They played 2.55 of the second period. It's 4-0 Toronto. The Leafs with a power play goal here in the second period. Edmonton has to come back again. A Riviere takes it in behind his own goal. Hughes goes to the right side. Coffee to the left side. The Riviere played it up on the right wing, and Hunter goes to center. Hunter with Gretzky trailing. Gretzky stopped it, but it bounced over the glass near the Edmonton bench. Well, the Oilers at this point uh, look very, very frustrated out there. They've not been playing all that well lately. They tied in Washington. They got bombed by the Philadelphia Flyers uh, Thursday night, 8-2. to two. They got beat in Calgary last Sunday night after beating Calgary Saturday. They showed a pretty good performance there, but uh, this club has not been playing well lately. Bobby, you mentioned something a moment ago when I queried you about the emotional uh, letdown that the Oilers might have after the exploits of Gretzky, and uh, you went through that with the Chicago Blackhawks. Well, and I was going for 51 the first time uh, that it was broken. We went um, three games without scoring a goal during uh, before we finally got the, the 51st. Here's Gretzky betting again. Gretzky picked that far corner, and LaRock just got a piece of it. The Leafs come back to center. That's Martin going in, and Coffey was back to break it up. Edmonton moving it again. This is Coffey with Gretzky trailing. Coffey upended. Play goes in behind the net. It comes back to Hunter, shoots it. That went wide. And the Leafs, trying to clear it, had it go off his stick into the crowd at the far side. I tell you, you couldn't tell if that one may have hit that far goalpost on that scramble. The Rock was down, and Gretzky was was being hauled down as Mano is down on the ground. I don't think he's hurt. Really just getting a little rest after all that action. Looks like he's holding his knee a little bit. Uh, he may have twisted it some. We'll see how he. I think like he's just a little bruise. He'll be all right. What the Oilers could use right now is a little bit of a, a break. Bunny LaRock has just really stood up in that Toronto goal so far tonight and stopped everything they fired him. You know, LaRock, when he was in Montreal, he bellyached that he was a backup goaltender. He came to Toronto and uh, thought he was going to be number one. Took him a while to get winning, but uh, with the performance that uh, he is uh, uh, in tonight, he could be their number one goaltender. The Leafs hop on it right away after the draw. Hunter hit his man. Robert cleared it. Just past four minutes of the second period, and it's 4-0 Toronto. Siltonen coming in, drifting it off the boards. The Rock covers up. Salming trying to move it to Maloney. Stick knocked it out to center ice. Thought it was up high, but it was waved off. Hunter shoots it in again for Edmonton, and Mano going in against Brackenbury. He went after him, decides to go by him, and the Leafs bring it to center. Robert gets the pass on his skate. Good move by Robert. Then he stopped the Leafs changing as the play goes on. Nearly got caught with an extra man on the ice. Nearing the five minute mark of the second period, Toronto four, Edmonton nothing. Salming to Oban, who has scored twice tonight for Toronto. Martin was stopped at the line by Hicks, and Gretzky winds up the game. There's Gretzky, one good move. Another played it to Hicks to center. Hicks shoots it in. Dribble it off the boards in the corner. The Rock was out of the net. Martin trying to move it out and hopped away to center ice. Tilton and couldn't stop it. Breckenbury played it over the line, but the Leafs will clear it. Gretzky stops it, comes back in. Gretzky stopped at the blue line. Pushed off the puck by Borea Salming. And the fans here at the Gardens love that. Tonight's game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. 
the Lens Crafters 50% off my lenses sale. Now, with any frame purchase, take 50% off the lenses you need. Any lenses, including bifocals, no lines, and prescription sun. The 50% off my lenses sale ends July 18th. Only at Lens Crafters. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. From coastal Halifax to the Victoria Shores, from downtown Toronto and beyond, there are great Canadians. You know, the Arby's Great Canadian, delicious slow-roasted seasoned beef piled on a toasted bun with lettuce, tomato, pickles, and onions. Yeah, that Great Canadian. And when you get one for the limited time offer of $2.99, that makes you a great Canadian, too. It's a proud day to be thinking Arby's. Come in and snap your picture today for your chance to win a new Suzuki SX4. Bob Mano, the Leaf defenseman who has gone in behind the Leaf bench just near the dressing room door. So you're right, fellas, he was shaken up. Get any report, we'll pass it along to you. Bob Mano of Toronto. There's Vi. Shoots it in. He has scored a goal for Toronto tonight. Now Fogelin trying to move it. Melrose stopped Hagman at the blue line. Low brings it up for Edmonton. Got across the line. He was checked. Five clearing it off the boards down the ice. It'll go all the way this time. And as Low goes back, the Toronto Maple Leafs are called for icing. Kevin Low back on that Oiler defense. The Oilers seem to have a very, as we mentioned before, a, a high scoring defense. Uh, Low only with three goals, but 21 assists. And like the other Oiler defensemen, is going to have a lot of points because they're offensive-minded, Bobby. They're up the ice all the time. They're trying to rush with the puck. They're good skaters. They're mobile, and they really can make those plays in the forwards. Well, my, my dad always said there shouldn't be any defense. Uh, there should be five guys out there that understand one another, and any one of the five should be able to play defense. And I don't think defensemen should really stay have to stay back uh, all the time. I think they should, when they get their opportunity, go up the ice and help the forwards. Good thing that the defensemen can play forward because I know a lot of forwards that couldn't play defense. <laughs> Here's Messier for Edmonton. Back to the line for low shot. Hit the goal post. And it rings its way all the way back to center ice. Maloney coming in. Fuhr out of the net. A wise move as it turned out for Grant Fuhr. Now low brings it in again for Edmonton. The Oilers have done everything but put it by LaRock. Messier slammed into Robert. And a charging penalty is being called against Messier of Edmonton. Edmonton shorthanded again. And there's the infraction, a charging penalty against Messier. Back to the live action as the Leafs on another power play come in. Then they go trying to go in and was stopped. And the Maple Leafs have to come back. 140 left in the penalty. Benning hooked it behind the net for Salming. He decides to go for cover as Weir was forechecking. Weir, a penalty killer with Hunter. Low and Fogelin, the two Edmonton defensemen. Coming in. Benning shoots it high and on the glass. It bounces back to Vibe to Salming. He takes a step or two out of Benning. Benning tried a shot and Fjord decides to hang on to it. Bob Mano, we hear, has twisted his knee, but he is now back on the Toronto bench. 
So he just might get back into action. Here's a look at Bob Mano on the bench. Bob, as you mentioned, as Bobby mentioned earlier, I don't think it was anything serious. It just made the way he sort of twisted his knee back behind the Toronto net there when Edmonton was putting on a lot of pressure. I'm sure we're going to see him back out there in the Leaf defense very shortly. 110 left in the Edmonton penalty. The Leafs on a power play. Fewer down and covering up on the play is Lee Fogelin. He's just outside the crease and he fell near the puck and decided to hang on to it if he could, and he did. Bob, uh, look at this. So look at that action around the Edmonton net. Fogelin not really knowing where that puck was, hit him in the left skate. And he very alertly jumped on it. The crowd here hauling for a penalty, of course, laying on the puck. It slides down the ice. We noticed that Lee scored on the last power play they had. They were 13th uh, in the league with power play uh, percentages. Edmonton fifth uh, in the penalty killing state. Solving shoots one in. Fogel in. Find it cleared. Again, Fogel in. This time, Dewey, he nearly broke away on Solving who was the only lead back. Now Anderson is coming in. Here's Anderson. It's set. And he hit the side of the net with a shot. Anderson tried to center it. Five on a difficult angle. Can't shoot it. Tried to play it back to Robert. It was deflected down the ice. 25 seconds now left in the Edmonton penalty. Robert skates his way to center. In with a shot. The rising shot was off the net. Gretzky couldn't stop Martin. It comes in front of the net. And the Oilers shoot it away, and the Rock has to make the save. Seven seconds left in the penalty. The Lynx trying to bring it up again. Mano seems to be okay. He's up there at center. Gretzky trying to hook it off him. Messier is back on. And the Oilers are at full strength. That's Curry going in with Gretzky. Trying to set it up. Here's Messier. Rebound. Oh, the Rock. I can't believe the work Bunny the Rock is doing tonight in goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs. With a score, Toronto four, Edmonton nothing. This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. More than fresh breath. Icebreaker's Cool Mint. A state of mouth. Insider access, live streaming, breaking news, and lots more. What you need to know, what you want to see. It's Maple Leafs on the dot. MapleLeafs.com, the official site of Leafs Nation. I'm Bob Cole, and along with me in the gondola here at Maple Leaf Gardens is Mickey Redmond and Bobby Hull, who has joined our Hockey Night in Canada crew. And what a game to get you broken in, Bobby. This is a dandy. Lumley comes over the line. Lumley rags it a bit. Got away with it and played it off the boards. But Salming is there. Out to Maloney. Coming in is Zanussi on the play. Zanussi picks it up. Dropped it to Maloney. And he took the shot and hit a leg in front of the net. 
That was Curry who blocked it. Now Silton it. Here comes Maloney. Maloney couldn't take it from him. Lumley missed it. It bounced in front of the net. Mano centered it to Maloney, and he was covered, and it was cleared to center ice. We're in the halfway mark of the hockey game. 4-0 Toronto. Salming and Mano on the lead defense. It's Bob Mano up to center. Zanussi trying to go in behind the defense. He did, but the pass was deflected away from him. Now Curry pushed it in front of the net. Vogelin comes out. The lead pass is stopped at center ice by Anderson. Anderson backhands it into the Edmonton zone. That's Hicks. The Leafs are changing now. The Oilers start out. A long pass goes astray. This will be icing as it's picked up by McGill. This game is coming to you from Toronto. Before Noel Coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. From coastal Halifax to the Victoria Shores, from downtown Toronto and beyond, there are great Canadians. You know, the Arby's Great Canadian. Delicious, slow-roasted seasoned beef piled on a toasted bun with lettuce, tomato, pickles, and onions. Yeah, that great Canadian. And when you get one for the limited time offer of $2.99, that makes you a great Canadian, too. It's a proud day to be thinking Arby's. Come in and snap your picture today for your chance to win a new Suzuki SX-4. Siltman behind the Edmonton bench. Uh, I don't know whether he's just got equipment problems or whether he is hurting somewhat. We'll have to wait and see if we get a report on that. Low lead pass. He tried to hit Anderson and went by him. McGill for Toronto. Hooked it high off the boards down the ice. And that's Kevin Lowe winding up again. Messier on the left wing. Covered by Vive. Now again. Anderson through center, up over the line, jams on the brakes, back to low, winds up, shoots it. It's knocked away, the rebound of Anderson, and it's blocked in front of the net by McGill. A loose puck, McGill pulls it in, and he might get a penalty. We'll watch the referee, Wally Harris, but McGill appeared to reach out and pull it in, and he I think he's going to be penalized. You're right on the money, Mr. Cole. Wally Harris making the signal for delay of game call. McGill not really upset at the penalty because he didn't know he was going to get one. But Glenn Anderson sort of stuffed that stick underneath him as you'll see here on the replay. He does a good job blocking that shot and it makes about three or four efforts to corral the puck and finally does. There's the stick of Anderson right there. I think if there's a difference in this game it's the big saves that LaRock has come up with early in that first period. Robbing Curry, robbing Gretzky. Okay, now, Bobby, Edmonton with a power play. The Oilers are saying what on the bench over there now? They're down four goals. Well, I'm sure that they know that they must score the next goal. They've got to get back in this game. They've got to get something going, and they're, they're really uh, in power plays. They're third in the league, where the penalty killing of the Maple Leafs is 19th, so they have a good chance here. What do you say? So the odds are, uh, I would say, that <laughs> something will come off here. 
Eddie Milliken, our statistician, working overtime this evening. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not too much of that stuff now, Eddie. It gets complicated, you know. <laughs> 9.27 remaining in the second period. And McGill of the Toronto Maple Leafs is off. And here, the Edmonton Oilers in a must situation, I suppose you'd have to say. Down four to the Leafs. They got to get one here. They line up. Drag it a bit, but it's not to center. So they have to come back on side. Gretzky over to Anderson. He didn't go very far. Mano shoots it off the boards. Edmonton regrouping again. That's Hagman. Couldn't shoot it in and hit the referee. We've got more action in Montreal, more scoring at the Forum. Here's Danny Gallivan. Barber. Barber coming down. Passed on the right side. Holmgren missed it by Kabarba. He scores! Holmgren! And the Philadelphia Flyers going out in front of the Canadians. There goes Holmgren. Loses the puck, but goes right to the front of the net again. And Billy Barber slides it through to him. The Canadians, or I should say the Flyers, lead it 2-1. to one. Edmonton on the power play. Messier takes his time back to Hagman. Over on the other side, coffee shot. Deflected away from the net. The Leafs can't move it out. Hagman again hooked it along the boards. Now coffee is in position. Centered it. But the Leafs clear it this time. High over the glass. But the faceoff will come up inside the Toronto Blue Line. A little desperation showing, I think, in Edmonton on the power play. Uh, they've had their success moving the puck to Gretzky behind the net. They're firing the puck from out to uh, the blue line, and I really feel their game is moving the puck around into Gretzky behind the net and let him make the plays from there. Looks like, Bobby, that Toronto really has Edmonton unnerved right now. They've been taking the body quite a bit every chance they get out there, and the Oilers are somewhat frustrated. Yes, they are. Loose, the penalty killer for Toronto gets it away. A minute and five seconds left in the lead penalty. Fjord, give it to Gretzky. From the corner, gets away from Luce. Over the line to center. Lead pass from the right side. Messi in the clear. And it's knocked away by Bobby LaRock. Edmonton with it. Hagman knocked it down. LaRock has been sensational in this game. Coffee waits for the pass. It didn't come. There's Gretzky in the corner. Gretzky back to Coffey. To Gretzky. Set up for Messier. And LaRock stopped it. Another shot, knocked away, it's in the goal crease. The light flashed for a moment, but the puck never did get across the goal line. And there's a pile up in front of Bunny LaRock now. You can't believe the action in the goal crease of Toronto. Well, there'll be some, I don't know if they're gonna argue very much. The red light went on. Here was Messier breaking in all alone. The save by LaRock, the red light went on. It looked like the puck may have gone in the net. But I think it just went outside that left goal post, caught the mesh, and rolled down the back. But eventually came out in front, and LaRock made a couple of more saves. You mentioned a moment ago that the Maple Leafs have the Edmonton Oilers jittery. Well, let me tell you that the Edmonton Oilers have that goal judge jittery, too. He could swear somebody was going to score. Look what's, awarded going, awarded look what's going to happen shot. here, a penalty shot. Mano, and I thought I saw it, Grabbed Mano it in the reached in, almost in the, uh, the, behind the crease in the net and grabbed the puck in his hand. Now let's watch it here. We'll see if we can see Mano after Gretzky comes across. Here, here's Messier. Now watch the hand block. There it is. Right there. there it is. Yeah. There he well, is. He fell on it in the crease, Bobby. He no fell on it in the crease. Uh, that's and what the penalty shot is for. Who's going to take it? Must, guess, must we ask? Guess who? <laughs> anybody, the rule is on this, that anybody that is on the ice at the time the infraction was called can take that penalty shot any one of those five skaters and there's no question about it it's going to be Wayne Gretzky against Bunny LaRock one-on-one -on -one. okay Gretzky <laughs> on the season has 56 goals here he comes listen to the crowd here's the great Gretzky no goal. LaRock has stymied Gretzky and the Oilers again listen to the crowd is wild as you look at Gretzky and Lovac. Good rear end camera look at it. 
The forehand deep. The Rock stood his ground. And the picture tells it all. How can you figure this? The deep, number one, thought he had the opening, but the Rock is there. You know, I think he tried to tuck it between his pads, Bobby. Yes, he did. That's what it looked like. It hit him on the left pad. Now watch it again here. He faked to the right, then moved it to the left and quickly shot back. To there, he tried to put it between his legs. You're right. There was a hole there. Not too often does Gretzky miss those holes either. That's but this building, you know, when he was going in there from center ice, and there's a happy Mr. Ballard right now, <laughs> King Clancy, this whole building was on its feet. Nothing more exciting than a penalty shot and probably nothing more terrifying for a goaltender than to have the game's greatest player taking that penalty shot, although Mark Crawford may argue with you. <laughs> he didn't have him take the penalty shot at the Olympics, and uh, maybe he had seen videotape of this game. Michel Bunny Laroc. Uh, stoning Wayne Gretzky. Well, The Rock wasn't too bad that night either, uh, this particular night, and uh, he came across to make, make an outstanding. Wayne made a nice move, actually. He, he kind of uh, made Bunny make the first move, and, and he did open up the five hole big time and tried to slide it through, but uh, Bunny was really quick coming across and kind of took that away. And he got a little lucky, too, because it, I think it just got caught up between his pads and ended up laying right there between his legs and, and didn't go into the net. But, uh, uh, but it is exciting. I mean, a penalty shot is, is a very exciting thing, especially when Wayne Gretzky's taking it. And uh, uh, that, this particular one was, was great uh, because it didn't go in the net. Does it have a spot in the National Hockey League to decide games? No ties. I, well, I don't know. I, I, I personally, I, I'm a somewhat of a purist, and I, I'd actually like to see ties and no, no overtime, no nothing. Just if, like the old days, you go into, if you go into a tough building, uh, you go into Philadelphia in those days, or you go into the Boston Garden, and you come, you come out with a tie, especially when you played for the Leafs in the '80s. Uh, you, you know, you've, <laughs> you've, earned, you've, you've earned, earned something, and, and it's like, okay, th then why, it, it just doesn't seem fair that they should get, an, or possibly get an extra point in overtime or in a shootout, so I'm kind of of the, uh, the old school that uh, just leave it as a tie, and, uh, uh, but unfortunately in, in America, uh, every sport has a finality to it, and, and that's what they, the, why they want overtime and, and those sorts of things, but uh, uh, I guess... Again, I'm just uh, old school. All right. Well, I'm not uh, old. I'm no, just old no, school. no, I didn't say that. <laughs> That's later on in the program. Uh, John Anderson is his 25th of the year. Rick Vive has picked up an assist. It's 4 nothing Leafs. And Bunny LaRock has stopped Wayne Gretzky on a penalty shot. There's a little bit of everything going on at the gardens. Back upstairs to the booth. The Oilers have been stymied by the Toronto Maple Leafs. And the crowd are standing now cheering. On his five gets a break. Back in front to the goal. And he was stopped by Grant Fuhrer. Now it's opened up. And Edmonton come right back. Anderson going in with Gretzky. Gretzky looking, twisting, turning, scoring. You can't hold him forever. It's 4 1 Toronto. Well, they finally got the break they needed, the Oilers. We'll have to wait and see who gets this goal. You see Gretzky make the play and the backhand, but look at the stick of Anderson right in front of the rock. Like, you couldn't quite tell whether he deflected the puck or not. He's going for the front of the net right there. Number 99. And he's a happy young man after being foiled on that penalty shot, Bobby. Isn't, <laughs> isn't, huh? isn't that great, though? We've seen everything <laughs> okay. in this game tonight. Super. Well, that's what, the, that's what a lot of these people came to see. Oh, absolutely. 12-34, that Gretzky goal, and Edmonton finally on the scoreboard. They've had many, many chances, including the penalty shot taken by Gretzky, as you saw. But he got himself fired up to weave his way through, and finally they're on the board. Now that's Weir fighting against Anderson. It's back of the net to Hackman, centered it! And a shot by Lowe was deflected away. Edmonton again, Fogelin drifts one, and that was a way off the net and goes all the way back into the Edmonton zone. What a hockey game here in Toronto. Toronto four, Edmonton one. 
Hunter deflects one to center right. Boimstruck slaps it back. Fjord had to be careful. Now low, starting out. 6.30 left in the period. Ogilin comes to center. Lead pass tipped up over the leap line. And Toronto's Boimstruck off on a change, cleared it before he left. Weir tipped it to center. Hunter is belted by Melrose. Now Weir picks it up, coming in. Gives it off to Hughes. He centered it. Oh, Hughes got in front of the net. Fogelin elected to pass it a second time. There's Fogelin stopping it. Great pressure again by Edmonton. Gretzky got in the rebound. The Rock's standing there, and the play is called. Unbelievable action. I'm Bob Cole with Mickey Redmond and Bobby Hall in an exciting evening here in Toronto. The visit, only visit of the season for the Edmonton Oilers, led by Wayne Gretzky, and the Leafs built up a 4 0 lead. On these sharp Oilers, now it's 4 to 1. With 5.57 left in the period, Gretzky went after Mano. But it was Mano to Robert to the line at center. Tipped there by Maloney, but he couldn't pick it up. Now Lumley from center for Edmonton. Pass hit Mano. He cleared it to Maloney. And Maloney shoots one off the boards and Fjord behind the net, stopping it for Coffey. 5.33 left of the period as Coffey skates to center. Gretzky on the right. Coffey tied up, has to shoot it in. And Mano takes over, Lumley bumped him. Gretzky stopped it, center to just missed Curry. Robert's pass stopped near center. That's Coffey to Curry, coming in with Gretzky and Lumley. And it's broken up inside the line and dumped to center ice again. Coffey backhands it in. Edmonton pouring it on now. And the Leafs trying to stymie this Edmonton pressure. It's cleared back to Lumley behind them. And he's centered in. The lock is down. And he hangs onto it. It was dribbling toward that near post. Well, the Oilers really putting some pressure on that goal. Seems to spark them somewhat. They're dumping it in and chasing the Leafs. And they're getting a few scoring chances out of that. Coffee, I don't think, got a real good piece of that puck when it came across. But that other play, here it is. That's Lumley getting the puck out in front. Here's Coffey. Got it on the heel of a stick. What is the defenseman doing? Oh, no. <laughs> but that play before when they went in, there were two or three passes made, and then when Fogelin made the pass across, he put it in the no man's land, right in between where he couldn't get it on his backhand or his forehand. Well, Pat, here's, of course, the right-hand shot. He's over on the left-hand side, and he really didn't know which oh. way to go with it. And Fogelin just blasted into the open area, and Hughes couldn't get a stick on it. Uh, Hedberg and Nelson and I used to talk about that all the time. When you're on your offside, give us the puck on our forehand, back where we can just direct shoot it. Don't give it to us on our backhand. 4.57 left of the period. Toronto leading 4-1. to one. This is by Low stopped it. Took a screen shot. Knocked down it for another shot. And that's blocked in front of the rock by McGill, who dumped it up to center ice. There's McGill again, shooting it into the Edmonton zone. Fjord stopping it for low. Hagman winds up to his left. Messier goes to the right. And the Oilers start out. Ogilin's pass went astray down the ice. There will be no icing, though. McGill has to hustle back. Takes it in the corner. Got it up to five. Five better ahead. No delay goal. He lost it. And low comes back with Hagman. In with Messier. Hagman centered it to Anderson, and he was stopped in three leaps rush out. Up the center goes Vibes pass by Anderson down the ice. Four minutes left in the period. Toronto four, Edmonton one. Low stick handles away from Martin. Gets the center. Played it into Messier. Messier has some room now. He centered it. And it Boyne struck who got back to cover up. And the Leafs break out of the zone again. Paymon has it this time. He's in over the line. Drives in with a shot on the short side. And it was blocked by Fjord. Coffee now coming out. Coffee looks for Gretzky. Lugs it in himself. Nearly went all the way and was stopped. Only got rid of it. Chopped back in over the line by Coffee. There's Paymon at center ice. His pass. Not down up the line by Maloney. Up and a penalty coming up against the Edmonton Oilers. Live from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, 
This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. You got a name? John Dillon. I love bangs. I'm not gonna lie to you. On July 1st. Oh, so later. We'll get John Dillon. Discover the heart. We're having too good a time today. We ain't thinking about tomorrow. Of a legend. He will be armed and extremely dangerous. Where are you going? Anywhere I'm on. Based on the true story. Do you want to take that ride with me? Take that ride with you. Public enemies. In theaters July 1st. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports. Your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Centre, Gate 1. More than fresh breath. Icebreakers Cool Mint. A state of mouth. Hughes did a pretty good job of uh, taking Danny Maloney out of the play. The people around the building kind of thought there might have been a penalty moments earlier down at the other end on Anderson. The Edmonton bench up in arms and you have it that the Leafs break away and the Oilers will play shorthanded. The Leafs have scored one power play goal tonight and here's Weir stopped by solving at center. Benning shoots it in for Toronto. Low. Whipped it on the boards and it slides to center and Salming waits near his own line. And we're watching him. Play comes across the line, broken up, and Weir has it in the center ice area. Played it back in for Fogelin. He's covered by Benning and can't move it. Trying to get a face off in there if he can. But the Leafs take over. Benning starts up. Coming out slowly to his own line and gives it off to Salming to center. Salming goes in. Played it over in front, it's broken up and cleared back to the center ice area again. Bill Derlego to Salming with 1.10 left in the penalty. Fjord stopped it behind the net for Edmonton. Now skates to the corner, and he whipped it up near the line where Mano took a shot, it's knocked down in front, and Fjord has to cover up. You know, guys, this is starting tonight and running through next week, Minor Hockey Week in Canada, and as part of those festivities, Starting the 21st, Thursday next week up in Peterborough, the Peterborough Liftlock Adam Tournament. 24 years ago, Bobby, they started with six teams, and they now are 72 hockey teams involved in that tournament. The youngsters, teams from New York, Quebec, Montreal, and Michigan involved, and of course Canada, and folks ought to get out and support that. You get a lot of youngsters out there that one day, of course, could end up here. Great character builder, those uh, tournaments. It's, it's wonderful for kids to uh, By the come. Way, Go ahead, Nick. Also, Brian McFarland of Hockey Night in Canada and Peter Puck are going to be there. Oh, isn't that great? Kids will enjoy that. Leafs hit the goal post. Off the boards it goes. Lovely went after it. He'll try to clear it. He was stopped by Martin, who centered it. Oh, that was wrong. Here's Piedmont. Score! Well, Grant Fuhr first made a sensational save, and then Piedmont got the rebound, and it's 5 to 1, Toronto. Now well, penalties again hurting the Oilers. And you see Paymont, he really got that puck up high, Bobby. Looked like one of your old shots, right up in the top <laughs> he, corner. He picked that short side. Watch it, here it comes out to him, pulls it, and there it goes up in the air. 
up in that short side. And Fuhr made a good stop on the original uh, shot. And Oban, look at Oban right in front, rubbed him. The, oh. big, the big play right here, Paymont, look at he hangs onto it, the defenseman goes down, and then bingo, right upstairs, and then he the crest. He didn't have much room to put that puck. 18.05, the time of the goal, Oban and Martin assisting. Paymont's 15th, 5-1, to one, Toronto. Long shot in on the boards and solving his back for the Leafs. Bumped by Curry. Curry trying to kick it loose, but Salming hangs on to it, and they get a whistle. Bob Cole with Mickey Redmond and Bobby Hall in the gondola at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. The Maple Leafs a four-goal lead over the Edmonton Oilers, and only 1.43 remaining in this second period. Gretzky and Curry with Lumley. Up front, that's Lumley. Stealing it, Gretzky gets in front with Curry, and a great save by Lamont. He made the blocker save on that bullet shot. Robert shoots one in for Toronto. One and a half left of the period. Rivier bumping with his man. Maloney, long pass to center. Lovely and Gretzky to Lovely. Broken up inside the line by Salming. Mano steers it back out and down inside the Edmonton line. That's Curry feeding it back. 105 left of the period as Coffey hits the blue line. Now he gives it to Curry going in. Curry one fake. He's trying to go by Salmi. Lumley went in to help. And 56 seconds left of the period. Got some great pro tips for you in the next intermission. Don't miss it. Howie kicks off Minor Hockey Week tonight with Beat the Pro. Watch for it on Pro Tips in our second intermission. Here's Dave Lumley, 21 goals and 28 assists. And what a great year he's having. He'll be our guest in the second intermission. So it'll be interesting to hear from Dave Lumley. He talks to Dave Hodge. Was it 12 games in a row he scored earlier this year? Yes. He was threatening a record. Stopped in Calgary. It was 12. I think he had 15 goals in that span, did he not? Came back the next night and got three, I think, in Edmonton. A long shot by Fjord, blocked. Stand to be corrected on that. But he certainly was stopped in Calgary. At center right. Cleared in by Fogelin. And behind the net, LaRock left it for Mano. Messier anticipating the move gets it back to low. 30 seconds left in the period. Derlego nearly got away. Still after it. Derlego tried to go in, but he was stopped. And that's Siltonen breaking out to Messier to center. Good move by Messier. Messier stopped near the lead line, and Anderson pushed one to center ice. Now Derlego again looking for 10 seconds left in the period. The Leafs with a four-goal lead. Here's Messier and Gretzky back to Messier. Dropped it. Fogelin shoots it. And the Rock made the save as the bell goes to end the second period. And it started fast. And you saw how it ended. So the score at the end of the second period is Toronto 5, Edmonton 1. Before Noel Coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse. Wealth of experience. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, 
and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. From coastal Halifax to the Victoria Shores, from downtown Toronto and beyond, there are great Canadians. You know, the Arby's Great Canadian, delicious slow-roasted seasoned beef piled on a toasted bun with lettuce, tomato, pickles, and onions. Yeah, that Great Canadian. And when you get one for the limited time offer of $2.99, that makes you a Great Canadian too. It's a proud day to be thinking Arby's. Come in and snap your picture today for your chance to win a new Suzuki SX4. The Edmonton Oilers get on the board, but the Maple Leafs have a 5-1 to one lead after two periods of play over the Edmonton Oilers. Dave Hodge is standing by with a special intermission guest. The Maple Leafs led 3-0 at the end of one period and have increased that margin now to 5-1 to one with a pair of power play goals in the second period. John Anderson and Wolf Pema in between, a penalty shot that Wayne Gretzky missed and a play that he uh, counted on to score goal number 57 for the Oilers' lone goal so far. Well, Wayne Gretzky has had all the interviews uh, thus far in this trip to Toronto and the most of the headlines all season long. But for a while, uh, for 12 games anyway, Dave Lumley had uh, his share of headlines for a goal-scoring streak, and you get an interview now. Uh, all of the hubbub about Wayne's visit, his only one to Toronto, has it had any effect on the team, or at this point can you assess that? Well, I don't know. I, all we know is for all the fans waiting around the, the hotel and the airport for us. And, uh, geez, I've never seen such hype for a game in my life, you know. And, uh, you know, Gretz is trying his hardest out there, and things just aren't going well for us tonight. What was it like to have been put on the line with Gretzky in the first place to realize that uh, you could maybe expect some success that you hadn't had before simply by playing with him, and then to obviously enjoy what happened after that? Well, I, you know, it took took a couple of breaks for me to even get in the lineup. Kurt Brackenberry got hurt, and then Patty Hughes, who was playing with Gretz and scored a couple of goals his first game with him, he got hurt, and I just got my chance. And uh, there's a little bit of pressure with playing with Green, Wayne because you know he's going to get his points, and if he doesn't, they're not going to look at him. They're going to look at his wingers. Now, no matter who plays with him, they seem to get points, and Wayne seems to get points. What happens when you, when you hook up with him? Uh, can you know what he's going to do? Can he know what you're going to do, or is it just something that happens almost without any plan? Well, one thing I learned to do was to expect the unexpected. If uh, the other team's defenseman was going in first for the puck and Wayne didn't seem to have a chance at it, uh, I just went for the open space, and nine times out of ten, he just picked his pocket, stole the puck, and put it right on my stick. And, you know, during that 12-game stretch, I was getting three or four real good chances a game, and uh, I was just lucky enough to put him in. On many other teams, a player who, uh, who received so much publicity and uh, now it seems in the near future so much money uh, might be unpopular with certain segments of his, of his team. Yet I've never heard one word, not a whisper, of any such feeling on, on the Oilers. No, well, you know, everybody asks us that if uh, we're jealous of the publicity he gets. And you just can't emphasize it enough that, uh, I mean, he's going to make a million dollars a year and all the more power to him. You know, we know he's our ticket to the Stanley Cup and uh, just give him all the money he wants as far as I'm concerned. Do you have any trouble uh, motivating yourself as a team, realizing you're so far ahead in your division? Well, I, I wonder if that's a problem lately, because uh, we've kind of almost wrapped up our division for first place, and first place overall doesn't mean that much in the playoffs, because I think uh, after you get out of your division, it doesn't mean anything at all. Right. And uh, I guess what we have to look for now is personal goals, and I mean, if you start shooting just for your own self, you're not going to win many games, and the team's been flat for about three weeks ever since Wayne got his 50th goal, and I wonder if that might be the problem. The way this team scores, I suppose we shouldn't assume this game is over, right? Well, no. If we had a score on our chances in the first period, we could easily be winning by six or seven goals. And like I said, a month ago, we probably would have been. Things just a little bit out of sync right now, and uh, we're not far away from it. Dave, thank you, and uh, congratulations for what uh, you achieved earlier in the season, almost a record of your own. Thank you. Well, Mr. Lumley uh, has played with Wayne Gretzky up to this point. He's going to go on this season to score 32 goals, and as he pointed out, even a fire hydrant might get 30 playing alongside Wayne. Uh, this team um, is just on the verge, and uh, it's not far off. They are they're young. Uh, you can see that they're assembling a, a, an unbelievable cast of, of hockey players. Uh, I mean, well, there's too, far too many to mention, but Glenn Anderson, Messier, Gretzky, Coffey, Grant Fuhr, uh, and they're all young, and they haven't really learned how to win yet as a team, and they haven't gelled yet as a team, but uh, 
uh, you can see that they're putting together quite a powerhouse uh, this particular at this particular time. And uh, and Lumley's probably right. Uh, well, maybe not a fire hydrant. You have to move a little bit. But uh, <laughs> uh, just about anybody could probably score 30 playing with Mr. Gretzky. The uh, the other thing, and I guess you talked about the arrogance that Glenn Sather seemed to portray. But the one thing that he has done is correctly uh, assimilated this group and realized that the style of play has to change. And so the league is going to change along with it because this team is going to dictate how the Calgary Flames have to be able to contend out west and later on win a Stanley Cup. But it, it is fire wagon hockey. And many times, he, you, I remember him saying, uh, they'd come in and they'd be down 4-3 or 5-2 or something. He said, all right, you've got us into this mess, now get us out of it. And a lot of times they did. They, they certainly did. And that's, uh, that was one of the, the big things that Glenn did and, and a very, very positive thing in, in his coaching. And, and that, I think, is one of the mistakes that a lot of coaches make today is that they get their personnel and they are unable to, to suit the game to fit the personnel that they have. He noticed that right away. And he said, you know, heck, I, look what I got here. I said, like, you look at the New York Rangers uh, this year and, and uh, this past year, and, and they had the same sort of, like, fire wagon type hockey up front with all the forwards that could skate, score goals. But uh, they were kind of tried to make, be made into a defensive team. And you can't do that. You have to go with what you have, and, and, uh, and that's what Glenn Sather did very well. But he also instilled in them also that arrogance that that he carried around and when you they had a swagger to them when they walked in and out of a building that every to the man every single person on that hockey team had a little bit of a swagger to them and and when other teams saw that you know and they saw it in their eyes and they saw the way they walked with that confidence uh that made a big difference the uh, it's the old adage you can't put the milk wagon behind the racehorse no absolutely and uh but, you know, I, I just think that they're building a, a dynasty at this point in time because they are putting together some pretty darn good hockey players. Well, they've had a taste of success in eliminating Montreal, uh, and uh, now it's uh, the Islanders are right in the middle of uh, their four Stanley Cups in a row, so in order to win, they have to try to dethrone a pretty good hockey team on Long Island. Well, and that's not going to be easy, but, uh, again, you have to learn how to win. And this, this, te this is a team that is poised to go on and win. There's no question about that. I mean, you can see that there's, it's going to happen. It's a matter of when and where, and are they going to be able to beat the New York Islanders that have been through these wars. That is something that they're going to have to learn, and they're going to have to overcome some obstacles to do that. And maybe a little adversity. Yeah. And right now, they have some major league adversity, because in Toronto, they are being beaten by a score of 5-1 to one by the Toronto Maple Leafs. After two periods of play, you're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. Before Noel Coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30, Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. Pride, excitement, style, it's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance, visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection, official team merchandise, newest Leafs gear, Center Sports. Your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Centre, Gate 1. More than fresh breath. Icebreaker's Cool Mint. A state of mouth.
Howie Meeker is a very famous name to any Canadian hockey fan back in the 80s, and uh, one of the special intermission features on Hockey Night in Canada was Pro Tips with Mr. Meeker. We'll give you a little taste of that. This season, the CHA has introduced a new skill testing program to help develop the skill levels of young hockey players across Canada. Here is Don Edwards demonstrating the goaltender agility drill, one of six drills that make up the CHA Challenge of Skill Test. Pretty good, Don. I think I can do better. I think you can, too. An important part of the total skill test program is a competition we call Beat the Pro. We had all the pro tip stars compete in all six skill drills to determine the best times in each event, and we challenged all the hockey players across the country to see if they can beat the pro's time. And it looks like JP made a pretty good run at it. Where to go? Dennis McDonald, both you and the CHA have to be tremendously enthused about your new program, Beat the Pro. Yes, I think every young Canadian hockey player is going to have a terrific opportunity. For the first time, he's going to be able to measure his talents through a handicap system against some of the best Canadian hockey players. How many different drills are involved in the program? Six tests. The forwards and defensemen take five, and there's one special drill for the goalies as well. Well, there you are, kids. Coast to coast in Canada, you get an opportunity to race against the NHL's best professional hockey players. Hop to it and beat them. 5-1 in favor of the Maple Leafs after two periods of play. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. It's Suzuki's 100th anniversary, and we're giving you lots of great reasons to celebrate. Starting with the 2009 Grand Vitara SUV, with an all-new fuel-efficient four-cylinder engine, four-wheel drive, and loaded with standard features. Plus our dependable Suzuki five-year powertrain warranty. And right now, to celebrate our 100th year anniversary, get special 0% purchase financing for up to 72 months on all 09 Grand Vitaras. Go to suzuki.ca and visit your local dealer for a test drive today. Hi, this is Chuck Storm. I'm live at the scene where last night there was a robbery at about 3.30 in the morning. Now, police have heard... Oh, oh. Before, Noel Coward. After Noel Coward. <laughs> Noel Coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. The Canadian central defender from the bare head. the opening goal! He's done it! It didn't work last Saturday, it has this, Di Rosario. The Oilers have really, uh, I think, been frustrated, Bobby. We mentioned it before. The Leafs, I think, have really done a good job. I don't know how much Bob and I were talking after the second period, how much this hype today and, and yesterday and coming in here has got to do, but I'm sure, as you, I'm sure, will go along with in your days and the activity that was surrounding you coming into buildings like this, it's got to have an effect on Wayne Gretzky himself and the rest of the hockey club, concentration-wise, if, if nothing else. Oh, I'm sure it does, uh, Nick. Uh, Teams tend to rise to the occasion when they're faced with people that have done extraordinary things. And uh, Toronto, if they haven't proven to themselves tonight that the way to win hockey games, and of course they haven't won it yet, but they've played so very well up till now, if they haven't proven that the way to play well is to be prepared mentally. Come to the game ready to give it all. It won't happen all the time, but come ready to play, and if it's there, it'll come out. You know, Glenn Sather has, has said earlier that he's he's going to, down the backstretch to the playoffs, is going to stop a lot of this activity and the access to especially Gretzky because of the attention and the concentration is being broken. Something like this happens a couple of more times. He may break that stuff a lot earlier. <laughs> well, the third period is underway. Coffee centered it. Here's a chance. Hunter hit the side of the net. Gretzky on the board. It stopped near the line. Edmondson with great pressure on as we start this third period. Again, Hunter comes in front of a shot. That's stopped by LaRock. It's fed back by Hughes. 
It didn't get back in front. Mano blocked it, and Maloney takes it out to center ice. Coming down for Toronto. Find the shot. It's knocked away by Fuhr. Gretzky tipped it back with a skate. Now Coffey goes around the net for Edmonton. Hughes missed the pass. Jumped over his stick. Robert in the center ice area for Toronto with Maloney. Maloney is knocked to the ice. Decides to try to get a face off. It comes to Gretzky though. Into Hughes on an angle. Hughes can't shoot it. Centered it. A quick drive was blocked in front by Salming. The Leafs come right back to center. Maloney going in. Another shot by Maloney into the end blues. More scoring at the Forum in Montreal. The Canadians this time. Here's Danny Gallivan. Off the boards. Here's Linsman over on this side. His home turn. Linsman is going in for the shot. Oh, big save. Well, Guy Lafleur doing his thing again. Set up by Keith Atkin. The Canadians back in the game. Three to two. And that patented shot from those right boards by Guy Lafleur just inside that far goal post. Just like it had eyes. Oban, who has scored twice for the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight, got the draw. On the boards, Anderson, though, for Edmonton, coming out with Hagman. The pass, though, goes in on the right side. Anderson drives for the net. In behind the goal, he's covered by McGill. They get their skates on it, and it's called. The Toronto Maple Leafs opened the game with three goals in the first period, and here in the third, they're leading 5-1. to one. Norman Oban has scored twice for the Maple Leafs. The only Edmonton score from number 99, Wayne Gretzky. Bogolin at center. Shoots it in. The Leafs all back. Bring it out to center again. Martin was bumped off the puck. Paymon went after it. The Leafs broken up at center. Boynstruck is hurt. He was nailed at the far side along the boards, and Boynstruck has been injured. Well, Mark Messier really took a run at him pretty well over there. The elbows were up a bit. Uh, maybe not high enough for Wally Harris to make the call. We get a look at it here again. Oh, look at what we're looking at again. <laughs> There's a good-looking guy. Look at that hair. Standing, standing beside <laughs> one of my uh, close friends, Claude oh, Provo. You, somebody downstairs is going to get it. <laughs> you guys always throw those things in. Here's a look at the check coming back to that. Look at that high stick up there. But mind you, Boyman struck ducked his yeah. head down yes, at the same did. moment as Messier came in and the stick really was not above the shoulders but he looks like he's okay now. Freddie Boynstruck I think you can watch for him in the future he's going to be a, a real good hockey player he is right now he played junior in Cornwall with my uh, with my son Bobby. Well, Toronto uh, Bobby have decided to go with a young defenseman and uh, Mike Nikolak is well aware that he's going to have problems from time to time and it takes these young fellows a little bit of time to get acclimated to the National Hockey League but they have decided in this organization to go with the youth and uh, hopefully let them make their mistakes don't make them too many times and learn from the NHL experience. Well if they're uh, going to go with the youth uh, they've picked some pretty good kids and uh, they're going to have to suffer with them a little bit. Uh, defense is the hardest position to play. And I don't think you're a seasoned defenseman until you're you've got five or six years in the league. Well, I think on the forward line you can cheat a little bit. That's right. We've always got those guys to back us up. That's right. Back on defense, they can't cheat. Now Messier for Edmonton rolled it back to his own net. The Oilers striving to get something going to get back into this hockey game. That center is low. In over the line he goes. Kevin Lowe, a good move to the side of the net, around the goal, centered it. Hagman had a shot, was blocked. Now Fogelin winds up, didn't shoot it. It goes behind the net again. Anderson is bumped in front of the net by Melrose. And Oban gets to center. Great move. Martin with him. Oban going into Martin. Score! Norma Oban with two goals and an assist earlier. Gains his second assist. And what a dandy it is. And he is having quite a night, Bob. What a move. He freezes Fogelin between them. Fogelin really has no choice but to stay between the two Toronto players. And Oban finally draws him over his way and just dumps it out to Terry Martin. And Fuhrer out of position, of course, having to play the shooter. A wide open net for Terry Martin. Did you see the move he put on the uh, Edmonton defender up it's, at the red race, line yeah. to walk in for the two on one? That Oban, he's, uh, he's a clever, clever kid. He said he was tricky and could score goals uh, down in the minors, and he's certainly showing it up here with the Leafs. 2.30, the time of that goal, and it's 6-1, to one, Toronto Maple Leafs. Hicks and Coffey come out for Edmonton. 
Played it up to center. It slapped off to the left side to Anderson. He was stopped. Now Curry coming in. He was put on stride, managed to clear it in off the board behind the net, though. Boimstruck is okay. He's back on. Weir missed a pass, and Vibe takes over. Weir stopped him. The two players fall. Curry breaking for the net. Took a shot. It was blocked by McGill. Stopped at the line by Coffey. Dumped into the corner, and Boimstruck has it. Boimstruck's pass gets by everyone, and it slides inside the Edmonton line. 16.35 remaining in the game as Paul Coffey starts from the corner to Lumley. Weir's with him. Lumley goes to center. Gets up near the line, decides to go to the far side, and Robert was there to greet him, and he stopped him. Now Coffey from the point took a shot. That was knocked down in front of the league. Sanderson misses a pass, goes to center. Ian Hicks bump. Once again, it's Coffey. Playing it off the boards into the Toronto zone. Salming takes it back in the net, but Hughes missed the pass, and it goes to center again. Vogel had dropped it back. Toronto six, Edmonton one. Hughes misses a pass near center, and Robert just backhands it inside the Edmonton line. Again, Gretzky with some speed up. Coming to the line, Gretzky to center. Boschman staying with him. He and Salming bump together. And Salming and Gretzky go to the ice. Kevin Lowe kept it in for a moment. Maloney comes back to help. Gretzky went after it, but it's cleared by Mano to Maloney at center. Dan Maloney slides a pass into Robert. He gets it back, takes his time, roll it right to the feet. And it was cleared, and Gretzky comes out. Gretzky to center. Great action now. And it's dropped to Hughes. He got away from Mano, took a drive, and LaRock blocked that, and he holds on. The next game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. From coastal Halifax to the Victoria Shores, from downtown Toronto and beyond, there are great Canadians. You know, the Arby's Great Canadian, delicious slow-roasted seasoned beef piled on a toasted bun with lettuce, tomato, pickles, and onions. Yeah, that Great Canadian. And when you get one for the limited time offer of $2.99, that makes you a Great Canadian, too. It's a proud day to be thinking Arby's. Come in and snap your picture today for your chance to win a new Suzuki SX-4. Bob Cole with Mickey Redmond and Bobby Hull in the gondola at Maple Leaf Gardens, Toronto, on the Maple Leafs. Outshining the Edmonton Oilers tonight in what was billed as Gretzky and Edmonton Oilers night here in Toronto. But the Maple Leafs, led by Bunny LaRock, several others, lead six to one. Here's Martin bidding for seven. Martin still after it, but it's clear to center, and there's a penalty coming up against Terry Martin of the Toronto Maple Leafs. We have to go back a few years to remember these people. 1969-70, 
And let's go in on Mick with hair. Look at the head of hair, Bobby uh, and Mickey and those. Leave guys. it alone, you guys, will you? You got to talk about those old haircuts. You know, there's one thing, Bobby. Don't show me that. Get those guys downstairs. I got these pictures and spring them uh -huh. on you like this. Aren't they something? There's no yeah. recourse. You know? A lot of good memories coming uh, back to that picture. I I'll should say, it. pretty good hockey club, wasn't it, Mick? Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> what a great place to start and break in, and yeah. have guys like Beliveau and, and Richard uh -huh. and Ferguson and all these fellows uh -huh. to learn from. And, well, there you saw that. Martin's penalty, and there you see Terry Martin. Oh, <laughs> your turn's coming. Oh, I hear that. <laughs> you know, it never fails. I'm sorry. Uh, Edmonton had a chance to score just before Toronto scored. It never fails. Generally, you miss one, and that goes right down to the other end, and they put it in on you. Here's Anderson. Tried to get it in front for Gretzky and couldn't. Coffee gets set from the blue line. Rolled it in front of the net. Bonnie LaRocco. He has been steady all night. Not a difficult chance there, but nevertheless, alert enough to cover up and hang on to it. Norman Aubin with two goals and two assists for the Maple Leafs tonight. Pema has a goal to go with two assists, as has Martin. This is Gretzky getting it back to Coffey. He played it back to Gretzky. He can't move on it. He will stop. Now Coffey from the blue line. On the other side, it goes to Hagman to Coffey. The hard shot is knocked away from the net. Gretzky in the corner against Salmi. The Leafs shoot it down the ice. 115 left in the penalty. Notice the rushing Gretzky behind the net. They're not giving him a chance to get possession of the puck and make those plays from back there. They're sending a man on him right away. Messier comes to center this time for Edmonton. Messier freewheeling it. Into the corner, center to Gretzky. Shoots, stopped by the rock. It's still inside the line. Coffee over here. Played it on the other side. Low drive, stopped by the rock. Great goaltending by Bunny the Rock tonight. Great pressure applied by the Edmonton Oilers on this power play, which now has 40 seconds left. Edmonton pouring in again. This is low. Dropped it back near the point, and it hopped off his stick, and it goes into the crowd. The Matty Hagman again behind the Edmonton bench. He looks like he's smarting from a check taken out there moments ago. Somewhere in his midsection, uh, maybe uh, in his groin. Never can tell. Got his back to us. Well, the, Oil the Oilers are a frustrated bunch here tonight. They've really had enough opportunities and good opportunities. Uh, not necessarily, Bobby, do you get a lot of shots, you're going to score a lot of goals, but the chances Edmonton has had have been close in, good scoring chances. They've, I think, and I said it earlier, uh, if there's a difference, I think it's that LaRock in the net. Uh, he stymied Edmonton earlier, early in the game. I think it set the pattern. Uh, Toronto came up big for him early in the game, and I think that's all he's needed, to get a little cushion, and uh, he's He's really challenging well, you, you know how many times before you've seen it happen where if you, you know if a goaltender gets hot early in a game and doesn't allow a team to get on track like they didn't or the rock didn't here tonight with, with the Oilers the next thing you know your team is up two or three and for all purposes if the team continues to go the same way this the hockey game is over you know and that's exactly what they've done to the Oilers here tonight. You know a little little trivia guys um, what does Tom McCarthy. Uh, uh, and I think he's in the Minnesota chain and Steve Peters with Colorado in the Colorado chain have in common with Wayne Gretzky. Well back during the midget draft. Well, you got me on that one. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> during the midget draft. <laughs> You're going to come in here with trivia questions like that. You call Tom, that trivia. That's Tom, impossible. Tom McCarthy was chosen first to play with Oshawa. Steve Peters chosen second to play in Niagara Falls. And a fellow by the name of Wayne Gretzky wasn't chosen until third. How about to that? To play in the suit. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hicks. Edmonton on a power play. Back in front of Curry's shot. Off the glass, it comes back in front to him. The covering was live, and he dumped it to center. That's enough, Bobby Hall, okay? 12.55 <laughs> left in the game. Six to one, Toronto. And now Martin's penalty is over. He's back on. Lowe comes in, dropped it along the blue line. It comes to Hicks. He took his shot, deflected by Martin. And Salming holds it. Gretzky tried to root it away. Salming holds it with a skate. 
It's still playable. Now the Maple Leafs, they're let go a long pass by Curry. Curry in front of Lovely. To Gretzky. Stop by the Rock again. Unbelievable. He's got your number, Wayne. He sure has. 12-17 left to play in this hockey game. It's been Toronto Maple Leafs and Bunny LaRock all the way. Coffee tries him now. Shot didn't get to the goaltender. It was deflected. Weir tipped it back for Hunter, but Martin's there, poking it to center. Paymon had to go off his skate. A Riviere got it ahead to Weir. Weir left it. Now played it into Hughes. Hughes against McGill. McGill bumped him along the boards. Weir comes in. He was trying to hook it back to the Riviere. It didn't work. And Martin is out to center ice with Paymon. Oban, rather, into Paymon. Paymon shoots. And he missed the net on the short side. Weir back in with it. 11.35 left in the game. Edmonton moving up now. Hughes missed a chance. Near the line, it's out over. Paymon stole it. Maloney's pass ahead is knocked down. Paymon went after it again. But he was going to the Toronto bench. Kevin Lowe's pass to center ice. In goes Anderson with Messier. Messier got in front, couldn't handle it. Anderson has it. Got it back in front of the net, and Barry's shot was up high. The Leafs now carrying it too high over the glass into the crowd with 11.04 remaining in the game. You're looking at Wilf Paymon. Big night again for Wilf. Don Cherry was saying just last week that when Paymon plays that rough tumble style, he's very effective, and he has certainly been that way today. He really has, Bob. He's got to uh, play that rough type of hockey, but not take the bad penalties. He's had a, a problem with that in the past where it gets a little bit too rambunctious, but if he goes out there and plays hockey and just goes up and down and plays a good two-way brand with the toughness, he's certainly a very effective player. The Edmonton Oilers. Frustrated and stymied by Toronto Maple Leafs tonight. Come back to center ice. That's Anderson with Messier. Messier has to circle back. Zanussi watching him. Anderson circles. They wind up and start away. Anderson comes to center. With Fogelin tipping it ahead, but it's knocked down the ice by Benning. Kevin Lowell back in the net. Off the boards. Messier to center. Here he is with Anderson catching up. Anderson going in to low, and his shot stopped by the Rock. Back of the net, it's centered, and Zanussi is there for Toronto to clear it down the ice. It'll go over the line, and we'll be icing as Lowe goes in. With a score, Toronto 6, Edmonton 1. This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. More than fresh breath. Icebreaker's Cool Mint. A state of mouth. Edmonton Oilers atop the National Hockey League in points game so far. This uh, has to be some kind of a psychological lift for the Toronto Maple Leafs if they can do this, and they're doing it 
with good goaltending, yes, but their full value for their six goals. Maloney shoots it from center. Fjord out of the net to stop it. His streak will end tonight with only 10 minutes left of the game. Unless Edmonton can pull out a near miracle. But Bonnie LaRock has other ideas. He has been sensational tonight in the Maple Leaf goal. The Leafs back checking, get it out to center again. Boschman, the pass in behind Robert. Boschman trying to knock it in. He'll be offside. It's now called. Dior losing his streak tonight. This is his 25th game. He's lost only once. That's his very first one in the National League. 4-2 to Winnipeg. Then he went 23 in a row undefeated. Only 19, though. Great future. Really impressed with a couple of other kids out there. First round draft choice, Kevin Lowe. He's really impressed me with the Oilers. And I think uh, Norman Aubin has chosen second in 79. And these two kids have shown that uh, the scouts have done their, their job. I think the scout scouting for Edmonton Oilers has really proven uh, that they're worth their weight in gold. A very young team and already look very poised. Not tonight, though. Trailing by five against Toronto Maple Leafs. As you see, Salming coming to center. Salming upended. Pulls the puck in. Still has it. Knocked down again is Borea Salming. The fans calling for a penalty. The play goes right on to Coffey. Back over on the other side. And Hicks will shoot it in for Edmonton. Mano goes back. That Mano around the net. Here he comes. The rock was upended by the Edmonton player coming by him. That was Hughes. At center. Hunter shoots a high one off the glass. It's in the mesh behind the leaf net, and it's caught. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Four, no coward. After, no coward. <laughs> no coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8:30. No coward's glittering collection of ten one-act plays. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse, wealth of experience. Here's Boschman. His play comes to the line. The Rock covering up. Gretzky and Salming on the ice holding each other. Back inside the Edmonton line. This is Kevin Lowe. Up to Lumley. Lumley tried to go in and was stopped. Mano got a stick on it. And the play is called. We've got a penalty coming up. <laughs> Boya Salming very reluctant to go to the penalty box, but I don't think there's any question about this. And Bobby, if he hadn't have called it there, I think he called it because Salming was sitting on Gretzky for about a total of a minute. He laid on Gretzky. Uh, Gretzky tried to get up, and he'd let him get up a little bit, and they'd lay it on him again. That takes a lot out of a kid, too. <laughs> He's got to be frustrated. They've been all over him tonight, yes, really. Yes, they have. Now then, Edmonton again with a man advantage. This is Gretzky coming in. Stopped near the line. Gretzky played it over neatly. Comes back to Coffey. And goes in again to low. Back to Coffey to Gretzky. Gretzky gets set from the blue line. Takes his time away from Zanussi. Pulls the defenseman along with him. Messier 
took the shot, broke the stick, and it was cleared by Zanussi down the ice. 124 left in the penalty to Borea Salming. Leaf penalty killers so far, so good. It's six to one, Toronto. Messier with Anderson, Coffey, Gretzky stopped at the line. Coffey lost it. Zanussi to center, nearly broke away. He backs up again with it. Now shoots it ahead. Loose was waiting there near the Edmonton blue line. 57 seconds left in Salming's penalty. To center, Gretzky. Gretzky breaking in this time. Gretzky right in. Oh, the rock. Had stopped Gretzky again. Coffee from the blue line. In front it goes. Here's a chance for Anderson with Gretzky behind the net. Stopped by Boinstruck. They get a whistle and a face-off coming up in the zone. Toronto Maple Leafs 6 and Edmonton 1. As we welcome you viewers who have been watching the game, Calgary. It's been all Bunny LaRock and the Toronto Maple Leafs here tonight. Oban has two for Toronto and five in the first period, made it 3 nothing. Anderson and Paymont in the second. Gretzky got the only goal for Edmonton up to this point. Martin for Toronto here in the third. Gretzky also took a penalty shot at 11.53 of the second period, and LaRock stopped him on that. And he has stopped him, I suppose, eight or nine times tonight. He was in cold. LaRock, folks, has been sensational. I'm Bob Cole, and with me in the gondola at Maple Leaf Gardens is Mickey Redmond and Bobby Hull, whom we welcome to our Hockey Night in Canada crew. We'll be showing you scores from Montreal as they come in also. The score here. Toronto 6, Edmonton 1, this is Hockey Night in Canada. We're here inviting everyone to take the home phone challenge. Holy baby. Who are you calling? Uh, my mother. Hello. Hi, Grandma. How do they sound? Sounds like my brother. Like my husband. Fine. And try this one. Hi, Allie. It's me again. Hello. How does she sound now? Same. The same? The only difference you'll notice is the 25 bucks you'll save every month with Roger's Classic Value Plan. Great. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, wow. Why pay more? Switch to Roger's home phone. Hi, this is Chuck Storm. I'm live at the scene where last night there was a robbery at about 3.30 in the morning. Now, police have... Oh, oh. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. At this moment, Borea Salming of the Toronto Maple Leafs gets ready to step back on. His penalty over. Edmonton trailing Toronto, 6-1. to one. Salming breaks out. A 2 on one Vibe is on the wing. Salming to Vibe. It never worked. As the Oilers got back, that was Lumley making a great defensive play. Curry comes in for Edmonton. To Lumley gets in front, spun around. Weir can't find it. And they get a whistle for a face-off in the Toronto zone. 5.58 left of this hockey game. Vogelin lost it against Anderson. Messier goes back. Oilers winding up. Strong skating Messier gets away from Durlego, or does he? Durlego kicks it back over center. And the Leafs, Rick Five shooting it in. Going back is Kevin Lowell. Low played it on the boards in the corner. Barry waited too long. There's five again. Back of the net. He centered it. And it's grabbed by Barry and cleared to the line. Out to center goes Messier. He has Anderson on the play. He couldn't go in. He's knocked to the ice by McGill. Fogelin from the blue line. A drive deflected in Bunny LaRock. No problem. Covered up and cleared it. 
Toronto six, Edmonton one. And it's low going in. It comes to Anderson. Anderson makes the shot now lets it go. And that was Black Maroc is 15 feet out of the net. And the puck bouncing off to the corner and we're getting another penalty. Looks like low. Looks like Lowe uh, got involved with LaRock. Watch this. There's Lowe going right over top, the top of LaRock. You know, he's going to get a penalty for this, Bobby, but as you saw in the replay, that was not an intentional uh, interference call at all. It looked like Bunny came out of his net to try and block down the angle, cut down the angle on Anderson shooting, and as, as uh, Lowe jumped across the front, didn't even see him, he just landed on top of him. Skated right in the way of uh, Lowe coming out from the corner. He's just in the crease. <laughs> Hey, LaRock can do anything he wants tonight. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. Edmonton may be down by five, but I really like the, their style of play. They're wide open. They move that puck well. Uh, and this, this ice here at the Gardens looks as good as I've ever seen it look. They're moving that puck well, and uh, whoever's making the ice, they're doing a good job of it. That puck is staying down. It isn't bouncing, and they're moving that puck well. They're not... They're not having a great night tonight, Edmonton, but I can see how what a what a very entertaining hockey club they can be. Talking to Coach Sather, he's trying to implement a little bit of the European style in here, uh, along with North American style. Dougie Moore, for your information, Bobby, and for the information of fans across the country, is the chief ice maker here at Toronto. It's called the Jet Ice, and he claims it's the best in the country. It's hard and fast. Makes good ice. There's a good guitar. Oh, boy. yes. Some character, isn't he? Great fellow. He did quite a job here at the Garden, Dougie and his crew. Martin slipped away from Fogelin's check. Weir goes in behind the net. Dropped it into the corner. Fogelin has it. Looks for the opening to clear it to center ice. Brackenbury is number 15 for Edmonton. And he's cruising about. It's called in the offside now. Martin was in. 428 remaining. Michelle Bunny LaRock. 34 shots tonight. He has been sensational. I don't think uh, in anybody's mind uh, that this gentleman is not going to be the first star this evening. I'd be very surprised if he wasn't. <laughs> well, something drastic would have to happen Whoever for him. Bunny not to get the first star with only four and a half minutes left. Well, he waited a long time to get that first victory. It only came a few weeks ago, but uh, well, he has really played some solid goal for Mike Nicolick and the Leafs since then. They were saying even today that Toronto getting beat last night in Buffalo 8-2 to that LaRock played a pretty good hockey game and uh, could have been a lot worse if he hadn't been standing tall in that net. Goaltender so very important. Glenn Hall used to win uh, 10 games all by himself in Chicago. Tony Esposito one year, 15 shutouts. I don't know whether the whole league has 15 shutouts this year or not, have they? No, I don't think so. I don't know for sure. But the last time I was in Montreal, Ronnie Andrews was, of course, bringing up the stats, and there's not too many shutouts around. Edmonton shorthanded and down by five goals. This one is just about in the record books. The Maple Leafs winding up. Came on, stopped near the line, and another penalty coming up. A slashing call. It's not a night for the Edmonton Oilers. Brackenberry again <laughs> getting involved, I think. He's going to get the two-minute infraction call. How does Kirk get Kurt... it here in the replay? <laughs> Looks like he put, put the lumber pretty good to Benny <laughs> Robert. <laughs> chop, chop. Benny made a pretty good play to move the puck around. But uh, Brackenberry, I don't think, goes through too many games without uh, getting a penalty, does he? Well, he's had three shifts tonight and two minor penalties. <laughs> pretty good average. Not a record, but it's a pretty good average. Well, he gets it. You know, he reminds me a lot of Bob Kelly from Philadelphia. He does. Well, I'll tell you, they get out on that ice, and, and he just goes and goes and goes. And he's the type of guy that, that Sather will throw in there, and really to get things going out there. He's a real tenacious type of a hockey player. He likes to get mix it up a little bit. Unfortunately, he's taking some penalties, but uh, we had a few back when Reggie Fleming. Guys <laughs> like so now the Maple Leafs have a two-man advantage. 43 seconds left in the penalty to Lowe's. The Leafs come in. This is Robert getting set. Robert got in front, and Fogelin fell. Got back up. Five went behind the net. Five in the corner was bumped by Hicks. Gerlego gets it loose. Gerlego takes a look near the line. Robert gets set. 
He'll give it to Gerlego. Maybe back to Robert. No, it goes back to the net to five. Nobody there but Mano out here near the line. Mano gets ready, closing in. Right in front, Gerlego. Mano gets set from the line. Rolled into the side of the net. The Leafs with a two-man advantage, and now a one-man advantage as low as back on. And we welcome you viewers who have been watching the Montreal-Philadelphia game. It's 6-1 to one for Toronto here. The Leafs on a power play, looking for number seven. This is Mano circling near the line. Great pressure now by the Leafs. Mano playing well. Gerlego slipped it back to Robert, and it goes to Anderson. Anderson circles. Hicks watching him. Here's Mano in front of Anderson. Backhand shot deflected high up over the net. Mano gets set, took a drive, and that was wide of the net. Into the corner, it's cleared back in front. Yours got another shot. They score. Rick by Finally, what tremendous pressure exerted by Toronto Maple Leafs. And now Vibe scores, making it 7-1. Well, it was just a matter of time. The Leafs all over Edmonton. They started with a two-man advantage. And the first penalty had expired when the Leafs finally score. But DeLego, a good shot from the corner. And Vibe just blasts it. Wrist shot rebound right behind Grant Fuhrer. But the Leafs have just really been impressive tonight, Bobby. Well, they had pressure on that whole power play. That was a great power play. They moved that puck around. It went from side to side. They didn't uh, get anxious to shoot it from out to, at the blue line. They moved it in and around from the corner and out in front. The Leafs led 3-0 at the end of one. 5-1 at the end of the second period. The only goal for Edmonton tonight has been scored by Wayne Gretzky, his 57th on the season. And for the information of you people who have been watching the Montreal game, Gretzky also took a penalty shot in this game, and Bunny LaRock, who has been a sensation tonight for Toronto, made the save. A one-on-one -on -one penalty shot. Gretzky went right in, made a couple of moves, and LaRock came up big, and he's been doing it all night. Down at the other end, you're looking at 19-year-old Grant Fuhr, who has gone 23 games undefeated and is about to lose that streak tonight. With 150 left in the game, Toronto leading 7-1. I'm Bob Cole with Mickey Redmond and Bobby Hull as the other voice in our broadcast booth tonight as we welcome him to the Hockey Night in Canada broadcast crew. Having fun, Bobby? I'm really enjoying it. This was a great game to, to uh, get broken in on. La Riviere comes with Lumley. Lumley going in. Lovely to the corners, gets it back in front of Maloney, was there to break it up and send it back. 1.15 left in the game. A jammed house here in Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. They've been buzzing even before the puck was dropped in by Wally Harrison at the beginning of the game. This young man, Oban, has two goals and two assists. Paymont circles, gets it back to the line. Melrose keeps it in. Oban, let it slide to the corner. There's Oban in front, and Grant Fuhrer. Watch the backhander, made the save. Sticks go high, pushing and shoving. And we might get penalties this time. Some roughing going on, but nobody has thrown a punch yet. Their nerves have been frayed. And they have been a little testy lately. I don't think we need uh, any of this. Uh, Edmonton, sure, frustrated, but the game is just about over. There's only 55 seconds left, and I don't think we should end this game any other way than Toronto walking away with a 7-1 to win. The Oilers, again, we mentioned earlier, have not been playing well of late. Their, their road record has not been what Glenn Sather would like it to be, and uh, they've got another game tomorrow in Detroit before they return home. And this is the type of thing that Sather was hoping would not happen to this hockey club. They've got a tremendous lead in the standings in their division, in their conference, and it's really difficult at times, and especially with the hype concerning Wayne Gretzky and the press conferences and all the reporters, and uh, I think it's it showed it's taken its toll here tonight in this hockey club, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see Glenn Sather cutting down on a lot of this say the limelight for this hockey club to get them prepared going into the playoffs because they've certainly had a tremendous first half of the year. I'd give the team uh, I wouldn't even let them come near the rink if they didn't if they had a little layoff I'd get them right away but they could get a little stale. They went into Washington tied it but allowed six goals. 
and Philadelphia put eight by him. And Grant Fuhrer tonight as his undefeated streak of 23 ended. As Toronto leads now 7 to 1 and 32 seconds left to play. Edmonton starting out. Up to the line at center. This is Anderson getting in front. Anderson gets set. Can't shoot it. Is in too far. Back of the net. He centered it. A break for the leads to center. Came on. Martin and Oban catching up. Came on. Shoots. And Fjord stopped that. Covering on the short side. Ten seconds left. Came on again. Side of the net. Tried to jam it in. Five seconds left. There's the countdown. You can hear it. Robert knocked away from the net. And the game is over. The Toronto Maple Leafs, Mickey Redmond and Bobby Hull have come through behind sensational goaltending Money of the Rock tonight to give the Edmonton Oilers a bit of a lesson and walk away with a 7-1 win. But Edmonton had, in all fairness to the Oilers, many, many chances, many chances as the fans here at the Gardens give the Leafs a standing ovation as they go off. But the Rock was great. Well, it's certainly a well-deserved standing ovation, too, Bob. I think a lot of people came here tonight, this weekend, looking for the Edmonton Oilers to beat the Toronto Maple Leafs. They've not been playing that well at home. And Toronto, a well-deserved victory tonight. Thank you, Mickey, and thank you, Bobby Hull. In just a moment, our Molson Cup three-star selection. From coastal Halifax to the Victoria Shores, from downtown Toronto and beyond, there are great Canadians. You know, the Arby's Great Canadian. Delicious, slow-roasted seasoned beef piled on a toasted bun with lettuce, tomato, pickles, and onions. Yeah, that Great Canadian. And when you get one for the limited time offer of $2.99, that makes you a Great Canadian, too. It's a proud day to be thinking Arby's. Come in and snap your picture today for your chance to win a new Suzuki SX4. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. More than fresh breath. Icebreaker's Cool Mint. A state of mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, here are tonight's Molson Cup three-star selections. The first star, Michelle Bunny Lorock. The second star, Norman Oban. And the third star, Wilf Paymon. Hockey Night in Canada returns in just a moment. Three stars are announced, and the Maple Leafs are a big-time winner this evening. 7-1 over the Edmonton Oilers as Grant Fuhrer has a 23-game unbeaten streak snapped as the Leafs win at home with a lopsided victory. You're watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV.
Before, no coward. After, no coward. <laughs> no coward changes people. Visit the Shaw Festival and see tonight at 8.30 Noel Coward's glittering collection of 10 one-act plays. Interesting as you look at statistics, uh, Grant Fuhrer will go on to win 28 games, lose only five, and sport a microscopic 3.3 goals against. And while they scored seven a night, usually, uh, not on this night, but Michel Bunny Larocq had won or been a share, a holder, of uh, the Vesna Trophy in Montreal before he was uh, acquired by the Maple Leafs. And obviously the defense was a little different in Toronto than it was in, in Montreal, and his uh, statistics reflected that. Well, he did, and, uh, and he only played about uh, 15 games a year in Montreal, but uh, he played sensational this particular night. Uh, I, I thought he was uh, the difference. Salming and Mano did a great job on Gretzky, and uh, it was, but Bunny was just a, a super guy. He came in from Montreal from a winning tradition, and I know it was very difficult on him to go through what he did in Toronto, some nights facing uh, more rubber than, well, probably than you've ever faced. Well, right? I know well, that. That's hard yes. to believe. No, that is true. Uh, but it was, I know it was tough on him, and, and I, I know I went over for dinner at his house one night, and, and we talked about that. And, and, and I know we had a very, very difficult time dealing with coming from Montreal to Toronto uh, during that time where it went from everything was so good to a situation, although he was happy to be playing more, it was very difficult on him. Well, he had a uh, 4.69 goals against average, winning 19, losing 24 and 8. The LA uh, Kings would provide a little bit of a problem for the Edmonton Oilers. The miracle on Manchester, Manchester. Uh, Daryl Evans scores, the big comeback in the third period, and that adversity, uh, learning to lose before you learn to win, uh, happens this year to the Edmonton Oilers. Well, it certainly does, and that, I think, was the first step in them becoming Stanley Cup champions later on because... Uh, uh, as you say, you have to learn to overcome adversity and, and find ways to, to get over that hump in order to be a champion. And, and that's a, these are one of the, that was one of the things that hurt them. And they had to go home, and they had to sit there all summer and think about that. And I, and I think that really helped the Oilers. All right, Ricky, it's been a pleasure having you with us again tonight. It's always a lot of fun to reminisce a little bit about some of these games. It certainly a good is. one to watch, too. Well, absolutely. One. Nice going. 7-1 over the Edmonton Oilers. We've taken Rick Vibe back to January 16th, 1982 as the Leafs beat the Oilers because you've been watching Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. This portion of Leafs TV is brought to you by Esquire by Movado. You invested in early mornings. You invested in the proper equipment. You invested in goals and dreams. You invested in moments that will last a lifetime. And you invested with TD Waterhouse. Because we know life is an investment with great returns. Whether you do it yourself, want someone to work with you, or have us do it for you, we can help. TD Waterhouse. Wealth of experience. When I turned 40, I had four kids and a full-time job, and I was concerned about my cholesterol, so I joined a soccer team. I could barely walk after the first game. A friend encouraged me to keep going, and I've been playing for five years now. I've made great friends, gained confidence, and I'm a better soccer mom and role model. In fact, my daughter chose the same jersey number as me. I'm Allison, and my participation is soccer. From coastal Halifax to the Victoria Shores, from downtown Toronto and beyond, there are great Canadians. You know, the Arby's Great Canadian. Delicious, slow-roasted seasoned beef piled on a toasted bun with lettuce, tomato, pickles, and onions. Yeah, that great Canadian. And when you get one for the limited time offer of $2.99, that makes you a great Canadian, too. It's a proud day to be thinking Arby's. Come in and snap your picture today for your chance to win a new Suzuki SX4. Videos, insider access, live streaming, 
breaking news, and lots more. What you need to know, what you want to see, it's Maple Leafs on the dot. MapleLeafs.com, the official site of Leafs Nation. Molson Canadian Sunday Night Classics on Leafs TV. It's a Canadian game. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. Well, thank you very much, Roger. The Marlies were 3-1 winners in the